Hello? Hello? It's about time we hit the road, passengers. Thanks to the three trailblazers, the activity of the Fragmentum has reached the lowest level, and the readings regarding the status of the Star Rail have returned to normal. Pom Pom will dispatch the Express shortly, and we'll be leaving Yurillo 6. Please be seated and say your goodbyes to this planet. Yanqing. Yes, General. Watch this person carefully. Huh. Do you remember me? I remember. Of five people, three must pay a price. <laughs> you are not one of them, Jin Yuan. <laughs> of five people, Three must pay a price. You are one of them. Hold on. I I'll... I'll be there soon. What did I tell you? He's definitely sleeping in. We trailblazers can go days without sleep. But when we do hit the hay, we have to make up for it. Anyway, no point wasting our time in the corridor. The conductor wants us to attend a warp navigation meeting. Same old location, apparently. And we can't be late. Let's head over. Oh, by the way! You drew the short straw. It's your turn to wash the coffee cups this week! Morning. You're very punctual. We'll hang on to it. It's cute. The trailblazing of Eurelo 6 is drawn to a close, and the Astral Express must depart for the next planet. That hardly sounds like you. What about that Stellaron inside you? Don't you want to get rid of it? The meeting will start soon. Passengers! The Warp Navigation Meeting has officially begun! Firstly, Pom Pom wants to congratulate you, the Nameless, for successfully resolving the problems at this stop. The Express is now able to continue along the Star Rail. The three of us actually pulled it off, huh? It's time for your conductor... <clears throat> that's me... to reveal the name of our next stop. Long time no see, Astral Express crew. It's Kafka. Hmm. Hmm. I came at a good time. You're all here. Every single one. No need for the mysterious introduction, Stellaron Hunter. <laughs> Himiko, correct? Apologies for interrupting your little get-together, but I'm sure once you've heard my request, you'll forgive me. I'd like you to make a... destination alteration. I've seen your face before, Stellaron Hunter. Even if it was only on a Corporation Wanted poster. They were offering quite the bounty. Dead or alive. Do you know the figure? Doesn't concern me. Then again, a corporation bounty is a compliment, not an insult, don't you think? The higher the figure, the bigger the compliment. You wanted criminals sure know how to look on the bright side of things. I will say, Herta certainly paid you all a compliment. A maniac that claims he can see destiny, leading a bunch of wild lunatics in pursuit of the most dangerous objects in the universe. And Herta doesn't give out compliments very often. In pursuit of the most dangerous objects in the universe, huh? Well, in that sense, you 
Astral Expressors and I are cut from the same cloth. You're in the wrong place, Kafka. We're not about to accept your request, and we're not about to get into bed with a Stellaron hunter. It was nice talking with you. Perhaps next time you'll be willing to pay us a visit in person, and we can continue our little discussion. Have you guys heard of the Law Foo? The Sienjo Lawfu? It belongs to the Hexa fleet of the Sienjo Alliance. We've heard of it. Hmm. But what you haven't heard is that it's currently very close to you. A couple of warp jumps away, in fact. Not to mention, 45 system hours ago, a Stellaron burst occurred on the Lawfu. An unexpected calamity. Don't you think? What exactly are you Stellaron hunters trying to do? The Sienjo Alliance aren't us. They won't give you time to explain. Once you draw the attention of the hunt, you become their prey. The Alliance will hunt you to the end of the universe. Stop speaking in riddles, Kafka. Say what you have to say. It's simple. That Stellaron has nothing to do with us, but the Sienjo is convinced that we're responsible. My companion, Blade, has been taken away by the Cloud Knights. I want to bring him back, resolve this Stellaron crisis, and clear our names. Nothing to do with you? Yeah, right. Sounds like a weird coincidence to me. You just happened to show up after the Stellaron burst? Also, we're not your friends. Why should we care if a Stellaron hunter is innocent, hmm? No! Why are we listening to her? The Alliance is strong. Is a single Stellaron burst really too much for them to handle? We're the crew of the Astral Express, not some squad of Stellaron stealing super specialists. You could, of course, not get involved. Knowing that the Stellaron hasn't yet affected this region of space, you could make the jump and arrive at the next world. But sooner or later, the Star Rail here will be more blocked off than it was before. I can tell you what the future holds. If you don't go to the Law Fu, the Stellaron will eventually contaminate the entire ship, and over half of the inhabitants will perish. Oh, you brave and fearless trailblazers, you benevolent nameless, can you really remain indifferent to that? This companion of yours, Blade, he'd perish too, right? No comment. Here are the coordinates. It's up to you how to proceed. Our destinations may differ, but the orbits of the stars will eventually converge. See you later. <sighs> March, get done hung. Whoa, what are you doing here? I gave him the lowdown. Hey, remember what I said, okay? We're gonna vote against it. I'm not gonna take orders from that woman. It's way too much of a coincidence. A Stellaron hunter shows up at the site of a Stellaron burst that just happens to be occurring nearby? Does anyone really believe that? Oh, I'm so mad. She just hijacks our communications and then hangs up? So rude. You used to know her, right? Was she always like this? <laughs> Taking things seriously all of a sudden? Oh yeah, I just spoke to Don Hung. Here's the deal. We've all got to vote against. I should have known you'd listen to that Stellaron hunter. Whatever. But you should think before you do that. Yeah. 
Seems like the longer I spend in my room, the stranger things are when I emerge. Hmm. March told me. If it were one of the other ships, it might have been okay. But I can't go to the Lofu. I remember the Xianzhou as a sight to behold. Good luck. Are you okay, Don Hung? March brought you up to speed, I assume. <clears throat> I'm fine. And yes, I'm up to speed. Good. In that case, with regard to the matter at hand, let's vote to decide our next move. Our Stellaron hunter claims that a Stellaron burst has occurred on the Sienjo La Fu, and that we're in the vicinity. If we head for the La Fu, we may have the chance to save many innocent lives. However, it's also possible that our Stellaron hunter is lying and using us for her own ends. Neither Welt nor I believe that she's telling us the truth. But we can't just ignore the intel she's given us. So, we're about to hold a democratic vote on whether to set a course for the Sien Zhou. All those in favor, hold out your hand. All those against, keep your arms by your side. Three, two, one. Four against one. Well, it looks like the Astral Express crew has a majority vote to head for the Sien Zhou. <sighs> I calmed down and thought about it a bit. If it turns out that woman isn't lying, then a lot of innocent people are gonna get hurt. Now's the time for thinking about other people. <laughs> All right, all right. I think we're all used to March's modus operandi by now. So, Don Hung, you want to stay here? Yes. I'm staying this time. In that case... Welt, ready for a trailblazing expedition? I know you've been itching to get out there for a while now, but make sure you take good care of the two of them. <laughs> Don't worry. Destination Sienjo, here we come! The train is about to make the jump. Five, four, three, two, one! Whoa! So that's a Xianzhou ship? It looks even bigger than Yurilo 6! For the Xianzhou, these ships are their planets. Terrestrial environments are cradles that allow civilizations to survive and then develop. Some of those civilizations progress further, constructing spacefaring vessels, which allow them to voyage into the unknown. The Xianzhou Alliance is one such civilization, I've only glimpsed it a few times, but it's as magnificent as I remember. You okay there? What's with all the lonely nostalgia vibes? <sighs> this is the Astral Express. I repeat, this is the Astral Express. We have arrived in Sienjo territory. Requesting landing permission from ground control. From the bridge, I mean. Welcome to Lofu Skyport. Starskiven. Please await transfer. Please wait transfer. Please wait transfer. <sighs> Something's not right. The signal is still repeating. 
but no one is guiding us into dock. Maybe the Stellaron hunters were telling the truth. It seems like something really did happen to the Sienjo. A vessel arrives at a deserted spaceport. Isn't that how, like, loads of horror movies start? Let's not let our imaginations get the better of us. Please wait transfer. Please wait transfer. Please wait transfer. Still the automated signal? Yes, it's still on repeat. Ah, there we go. The Jade Gate now opening. On behalf of the Sienjo La Fu. Welcome, guests from afar. Please proceed to dock in accordance with the guidance. Huh? Is this still automated? The signal broke off. Seems that's all there is. We should get going. Imiko, stay vigilant back here on the Express. Relax. I've got Don Hung here with me. Make sure you're properly prepared before you set off. Before we set off, I need to clarify the aim of this journey with you. The Stellaron Hunters have given us a lot to consider, and a lot to doubt. But the most important part of this expedition is... Ugh, that Bellabog expedition got in your head, huh? The Stellaron Hunters clearly have ulterior motives. However, knowing what they're all about, and given the focus of Kafka's words, I have no doubt that the Sienjo is dealing with a Stellaron. The Alliance and the Express haven't had any previous dealings, so our arrival might not receive the warmest welcome. But as trailblazers, we're not in this for fame or gain. We just need to do everything in our power to assist the Sienjo and eliminate the source of disaster. Always keep that in mind, and don't forget the way of the trailblaze. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. Yeah! Let's go. Oh, uh, look. It's just containers as far as the eye can see. This area isn't for receiving guests, it's for unloading cargo. Who decided to send us this way? Such a huge port and not a soul in sight. It gives me the creeps. Huh. Ah, oh, stop talking. If there is someone here, they're in my bad books already. Mr. Yang, what should we do? We should start with the person who opened the Jade Gate. If it turns out they're not friendly, then at least they've already made things easier for us. If it turns out they were just doing their job, then we can ask them what happened here. Are you forgetting we've got Mr. Yang with us? Oh, right. You haven't seen what he can do yet. Let's move. Keep your wits about you. Mr. Yang, someone's hurt! Up... Up ahead... You're hurt, son. Uh... Try not to talk. March, use your six-phased ice to stop the bleeding. Go easy. We don't want to add frostbite to his list of complaints. I'm on it! This area saw fierce fighting only recently. Let's keep searching. There might be other survivors. Up ahead. Please.
Uh, there are wounded everywhere. The silver lining is that, based on what we can see, no civilians were caught up in the battle. I'm guessing the Sienjo must have evacuated the port immediately, leaving the soldiers to deal with the crisis. But as for these uh, corroded monsters... Careful. We've never seen this kind of life form before. Miss Tignon, fall back! Hey, you there! We need your help! Thanks for saving beauty from the bees! Pleasure. But are you thanking us or giving yourself a compliment? Miss Tingyun, the Mara struck have been repelled, but, but there could be other dangers nearby. The situation is serious. Allow us to escort you back to the Skyfaring Commission. Immediately. Calm down, I heard you. It'd be rude of me to depart without thanking our benefactors. My name is Ting Yun. I'm the Amicassador for the Lawfu Skyfaring Commission Merchant Guild. May I venture to know the illustrious names of my heroes? Illustrious names? Uh, sure. I'm March 7th. This is Mr. Yang. Oh, Mr. Welt Yang. And this is... What a heroic-sounding name! Don't mind him. He likes to get a little creative with his introductions. Uh, next time, why not remind me before I give up my name? I see. Well, thank you for coming to our aid. Although, there is one thing I don't understand. Starskiff Haven is under lockdown, since none of you are Sienjo residents. May I ask how you came to be here? If you can't offer an explanation, I'm afraid these Cloud Knights will have to escort you out. Uh, we called for port transfer and got no response, but then someone opened the Jade Gate for us. When we arrived, there was no one to be found, so we started to make our own way through. How can that be? My ship was the last one into port before the Jade Gate was shut. The Skyfaring Commission has already locked down Starskiff Haven entirely. We're telling the truth. You could verify it yourself by checking the access history of the Jade Gate. We, we found a strange ourselves when the gate opened, but no one came to greet us. Hmm. You're with the Astral Express. You've heard of us? Indeed I have. Oh, you've arrived at a bad time. The Sienjo has suffered an incident. Whether you're here for leisure, treatment, or trade, I'm afraid you won't be able to go through with it. For your safety, you should hurry to Central Starskiff Haven and take refuge. I'll take you to Madame Yukong of the Skyfaring Commission and let her decide how to proceed. We caught wind of the incident you mentioned. That's why we're here, Miss Tingyun. To help the Sienjo seal the Stellaron. <laughs> your actions have already revealed your kind hearts to me. Uh, sadly, I can't make you any promises. You're outsiders, and only Madame Yukong has the authority to consider your offer. Oh, don't worry. Madame Yukong is kind-hearted too. Come on now. I'll lead the way. Those monsters back there... They were no monsters. Well, those were not to be confused with monsters, benefactors. We call them Mara Struck. Why have we stopped? Don't worry, miss. I 
have a favor to ask, that's all. Favor? Count me out. What if we do it wrong and you get your cloud cronies to throw us in jail? I shouldn't have doubted you. Please, accept my apologies. Our road ahead is barricaded. Do you see? The soldiers stationed here must have moved these into a roadblock. <laughs> what? Does he look like a crane to you? I'd like to see us try. <laughs> They're extremely heavy. Even with all of us, we wouldn't be able to move one. Not that I'm doubting your skill, but I'd feel terrible if you hurt yourself in the process. If I'm not mistaken, the containers in the Trove of Verdure can be moved around using a control panel. You've already put on quite the show. Do you think you'll be able to find and operate the control panel? Should be simple, right? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not built for hard labor. Uh, she sure knows how to boss people around. We just need to pass through here, take the barge to Starskiff Haven, and we'll be safe. You know, you sound sweet enough, but you were talking about getting us escorted away by your Cloud Knights. If it weren't for Mr. Yang... You misunderstand. If you were in my shoes right now, wouldn't you want to keep your guard up? Ah, uh, true. But we came here to trailblaze, not jailblaze. You mentioned the Stellaron. You work for the Skyfaring Commission, so I assume you're aware of its destructive power. Yes, I am. As an Amicassador, I've been to many planets and seen my fair share of Stellaron corrosion. <sighs> Get ready, and watch your backs. Leave it to me! Oh, finally! Look how many tail hairs I lost on the way! Oh, my beautiful tail! We had a difficult start, but things got easier. Look, that's the barge I was talking about. Uh-uh-uh, just sit back and relax. All Amicassiters know their way around the Star Skiff. I was perfectly calm until she volunteered to help. Please take your seats, everyone. We'll be off right away. of the Skyfaring Commission, allow me to welcome you to Starskiff Haven. On the Sienjo Lofu, anything relating to aviation, navigation, and trade falls within the scope of the Skyfaring Commission, which is one of the six commissions of the Lofu. As the biggest port on the ship, Starskiff Haven is governed by the Skyfaring Commission, too. You definitely sound like a... Oh, uh, what was it again? Oh, Ami Cassiter. By which I mean, nice speech. That's too kind of you. My job involves ferrying business delegates to and from Starskiff Haven, so I do this kind of introduction all the time. Anyway, we're safe now. Normally, I'd be a good host and take you around, but these are difficult times. Let's head to the Palace of Astrum first, and report your arrival to Madame Yukong. Palace of Astrum? Right there, the tallest building in the city. It's also the headquarters of the Skyfaring Commission. Let's hurry, we haven't got much time. <sighs> I 
I don't mean to rush you, but if Madame Yukong holds me accountable for not getting you over soon enough, I wouldn't want to be around for the consequences. Sounds scary. I thought you said she was kind-hearted. We need to make a few preparations before paying a visit to any of the six commissions. Rest assured, Miss Tingyun, we won't go anywhere. If you can inform Madame Yukong of our arrival first, we'll meet you at the palace entrance later. Very well. <laughs> Little Miss Fox moves at quite the pace. I can't keep up with her. Uh, I've spent too long on the bench. Let's catch our breath for a while, huh? We can expect a packed schedule ahead. That might be a little harsh, but she does put her own interests first. She did the right thing by not trusting us initially. We were an unknown quantity to her. As for the rush, uh, my guess is she's just eager to get us out of her hair and further up the chain. It'll be all right. We're not trying to stand in her way. We have nothing to hide from her. <laughs> we didn't have anything to hide in Bellabog either. Not so fast. I need to give you two a heads up first. Our meeting with Madame Yukong won't be without risk. We need to be prepared and take it seriously. She is a top Sienjo leader. Oh, Mr. Yang, do you think this could be Bellabog all over again? No, the Sienjo Alliance is better than that. But Madame Yukong will definitely have a string of difficult questions for us. Why did we choose to come to the Sienjo now? How did we know that the incident is related to Estelleron? Who leaked their information to us? Careless answers mean distrust and potential hostility, which would make things much harder for us. Ah, oh, crud. One of us is gonna blurt something out, or get something wrong, I just know it! Don't worry, we'll find a way through. Let me do the talking. Here already. Sorry to keep you waiting. Madame Yukong is expecting you. Are you not coming? I've brought the Madame Helmmaster up to speed. It's over to you now. Yes, madam. Report the losses to General Jing Yuan and find someone from the Divination Commission. I can't just stand there watching while we deal with this mess. Greetings, guests from the Astral Express. Ting Yun has informed me of the purpose of your visit. Receiving guests isn't normally one of my responsibilities. But since you know about the Stellaron and have stated that you want to help the Lawful, I thought I should at least meet you in person. 
and politely decline your proposal. The Sienjo Alliance knows what a Stellaron is, and is more than capable of handling it ourselves. We have been around for over 8,000 years, and weathered countless dangers and crises. While the situation is serious, we have more than enough resources to spare. Outsider help is not needed on this occasion. You are guests from afar. There is no reason for this matter to concern you. Am I making myself clear? From what we've gathered, the influence of the Stellaron can still be contained. If we can locate it in time and contain it, it's possible that we can restore any space and any individuals affected by the corrosion. We have experience in preventing Stellaron disasters, and we've only come here to lend you that experience. I've said this and I'll say it again. This is an internal affair of the Sienjo Alliance, and there is no need for the Astral Express to get involved. I decided to arrange a meeting with you as a gesture of respect, but my decision is final. Uh, but... Never mind, Mr. Yang. If the Sienjo Alliance say they can handle it, then we're wasting our breath. Let's go. I'm afraid that's impossible. Huh? And what's that supposed to mean? It's only been a few days since the presence of a Stellaron was detected on the Law Fu. Starskiff Haven has been under full lockdown. No one has been permitted to leave. How did you come to know of the incident? And what led you to conclude that it was linked to a Stellaron? I acquired the access history of Starskiff Haven. Not long ago, someone hacked into the system and opened the Jade Gate, before guiding you, the Astral Express, into our territory. The hacker was skillful and even taunted us with her seal. Her name is Silverwolf, a member of the Stellaron Hunters. What say you in your defense? You are forbidden from leaving the Skyfaring Commission until the aforementioned questions have been investigated. Don't be too harsh, Yukong. If this gets out, the whole galaxy will think the Alliance has forgotten how to treat our guests. General Jingyuan. It's very unlikely that the Express has joined forces with the Stellaron Hunters. They are mortal enemies, after all. Apologies for interrupting your meeting. My name is Jing Yuan. I'm the general of the Cloud Knights here on the Law Fu. General, this is an internal affair for the Law Fu. I fully agree with you, Helm Master Yu Kong. This is indeed an internal affair. I am sorry, guess of the Astral Express. It is true that there is a Stellaron on the Law Fu, but I'm afraid I cannot accept your kind offer to help resolve the issue. This is a Xianzhou matter, and it is our responsibility to handle it. Of course, it would be inappropriate of me to let you return without something to show for it. While I cannot accept your help with regard to the Stellaron, I do have a favor to ask. Please, after you. Ah, the Astral Express. I must confess that the train's reputation precedes it, such that it is often close to my thoughts. How delightful to come face to face with its passengers. It's an honor to meet you, General. Uh, may I ask what the favor you spoke of is? Ah. A matter that requires capable people such as yourselves. We captured a member of the Stellaron Hunters a few days ago, who goes by the name of Blade. During our investigation, the Divination Commission, the department in charge of intelligence processing, intercepted a transmission sent out by his accomplice, Kafka. 
who has managed to hide aboard the ship. As for where that transmission was destined... <sighs> I have some knowledge of your relationship with the Stellaron Hunters. The Divination Commission is convinced that you made an alliance with them. <laughs> I say that's impossible. The crew of the Astral Express are honorable people whose valiant deeds are lauded across the universe. There must have been a misunderstanding. As such, I came to the conclusion that the communication must have been an attempt by the Stellaron Hunters to sow dissent between us. We can handle the Stellaron, but it will take time and will require the bulk of the Cloud Knights on the ship. It is this Kafka that concerns me. The longer she stays on the ship, the bigger the threat she will pose. Since the Stellaron Hunters lured you to our ship, we shall move with the current. You are hereby authorized to do as you deem fit on the Lofu, with the goal of bringing Kafka out of the shadows and under our control. Doing so would clear the misunderstanding between us, reveal the true intentions of the Stellaron Hunters, and help us understand their connection to the Stellaron Burst. What say you, my astral guests? Hmm. What do you think? <sighs> I'm afraid my hands are tied on this is a diplomatic affair, and I have rules to follow. But if you can bring me the Stellaron Hunter, and discover her motive for placing a Stellaron on the ship, it would be of great help in resolving the incident. The Lofu never fails to reward that which is given. Okay. Wonderful. It's a deal, then. I shall notify Yu Kong that all intel is to be shared with you and that our best personnel are to aid you in your search. If there is anything the Skyfaring Commission or the Cloud Knights can do for you during your stay, don't hesitate to make it known. I think we only scratched the surface of this General Jing Yuan. Theoretically, yes, but something feels off. <sighs> ah, that's it. A minor detail, but curious. He avoided talking about Blade. Since the Cloud Knights have already captured a Stellaron Hunter, why not use him to get to Kafka? Huh? Why rely on us? The Sienjo is reluctant to involve outsiders in the Stellaron disaster, so why is it so keen on letting us capture a Stellaron hunter? Yes. The only sensible conclusion I can draw is that Blade had already escaped when Jing Yuan spoke to us, provided they even captured him in the first place. Therefore, given our connection to Kafka, we represent the only way of luring the Stellaron Hunters in. That's why he asked for our help. He didn't want to let anyone else find out that Blade had already escaped. Now that we've figured that out, perhaps we can get closer to the core of what's happening here. Master Diviner. You heard our discussion. What do you make of it? What do I make of it? The way of heaven is apparent, but the heart of humanity is often deceptive. Are you asking me to divine their true intentions? That won't be necessary. The crew has nothing to do with the incident. Of that, I am almost certain. It isn't their intentions that trouble me. All I want is for them to lure out the one we're after. Wasn't that my idea, General? Indeed. Your counsel has always been a great help to me. You may use your discretion on the matters ahead of us. 
<laughs> Why don't you retire early and I use my discretion full time? <laughs> it is still too soon, unfortunately. If something goes wrong, you'll need a general to take the blame. How could I simply walk away and put you at such risk? If you'd brought me that blade earlier, none of this would have been necessary. Wait, what are you up to exactly? <gasps> Jingyuan, did you... let him escape on purpose? Me? <laughs> I have no idea he might escape. Unlike you, my gaze never travels beyond the horizon. I take full responsibility. The Cloud Knights failed in their duty. I can understand. There's a lot to take care of on the Xinjo. You are bound to miss something. Thank goodness I'm here. On that note, perhaps it's about time you finally nominate me as your successor when the Six Charioteers next convene. Yes, yes, yes. I have to go now. I'll leave this in your overwhelmingly capable hands, Fushen. <sighs> there are three things in the world that I can't seem to rid myself of. The troubles of the Sienjo, the papers on my desk, and the weeds in my garden. General, Diviner Fu wants the General's position for herself. Everyone knows that. She is very capable. But her intellect is burdened by a quick temper. I'll retire when she's achieved a better balance. This Stellaron thing is easy. Blade escaped. Now we gotta go get him. Just say the word, and I'll solve this in a flash. I can understand your impatience, and I know you want to prove yourself. Now is not the time. If you truly wish to become sword champion, you shouldn't be running around brandishing your sword at people. Especially not a major criminal. You think I'd lose to Blade? I'm saying you need to have patience, Yang Ching. Governing Xianzhou is different from a sword fight. The only way to build momentum is to work slowly. Besides, we still don't know who's really moving the chess pieces. There is something we must take care of before making our next move. As long as it remains unresolved, we're at a stalemate. That something is the Stellaron. How did it manage to bypass the Skyfaring Commission's inspections and the Divination Commission's predictions? Where is it now? I say we bring those two Stellaron hunters before Diviner Fu. She'll get an answer out of them in no time. I've asked our friends from the Express to take care of that for us. Worry not, you'll have your moment when the current stalemate is broken. You are my most trusted aide, and there are some things that I would only assign to you. Speaking of which, Yang Ching... <sighs> that boy... I suppose it is my fault. I should have given him an opportunity already. A sharp sword can't stay sheathed forever. <laughs> My fear is that this might prove too big a setback. Bigger than his exuberance. <sighs> Madame Yukong has asked me to look after you. Seems like we were destined to be in each other's company. The Skyfaring Commission has reserved rooms for you at the Petrichor Inn. When you finish your business here, how about some tea together? Easy. I know this probably brings back bad memories. Well, here we are. I feel sleepy already. Hey, that's not fair. My eyes are peeled this time. I'll make a run for it the second things go wrong. Uh, jokes aside, 
Did you see Madame Yukong frown at us? I thought her guards were about to jump out of nowhere and throw us in jail. <sighs> I'd rather deal with monsters than these big shots. Uh, uh I mean, not that Madame Yukong doesn't have her merits. <laughs> Don't worry, my lips are sealed. But as her subordinate, I have to say that it's Madame Yukong's duty to keep her guard up. The Law Fu is facing a crisis, and as head of the Sky Faring Commission, she is responsible for the security of the Sienjo's customs and borders. She's actually a very reasonable old girl in private. They say that many years ago, Madame Yukong was an ace pilot in the Cloud Knights. She was a work hard, play harder type, known for her hot temper and incredible skill. Eventually, she became the head of the entire commission, which required her to learn patience and adopt a meticulous approach to her work. In any case, Madame Yukong instructed me to reserve the best rooms at the inn and have all your expenses covered. She wants to extend the full courtesy of the Sienjo so that all of you enjoy your stay to the fullest. She specifically mentioned that if you wish to buy anything at the inn, be it food or otherwise, just let the innkeeper know. The commission will cover the cost. Why don't you go back yourself? Ahem. <clears throat> Seeing as our hosts are so thoughtful, I guess we should help ourselves. Right, Mr. Yang? We should focus on our objective first. Seeing as Hellmaster Yukong was extremely reluctant to get us involved, am I right to speculate that the Skyfaring Commission has some leads on the whereabouts of Kafka? Exactly right. The suspect is extremely cunning. She encrypted her transmission and timed her communication. We couldn't pinpoint her exact location. But as cunning as she is, the Divination Commission has managed to find something. Here are the coordinates. It's up to you how to proceed. Our destinations may differ, but the orbits of the stars will eventually converge. See you later. Precisely. That's the sound of a device. Uh, which means what exactly? This is a starship. There are all kinds of devices making weird noises. Miss March, to the untrained ear, these noises may sound the same, but for the craftsmen of the Artisanship Commission, every machine has a different pitch and melody. The General sent for craftsmen, and they concluded that the sound came from the shipyard facilities in Stargazer Navalia. Now, get some rest and prepare yourselves for the operation ahead. I look forward to seeing you in action. Let's take advantage of the rest. It won't be easy to track down Kafka the Stellaron Hunter. Oh, let's let the Express know how we're doing. More importantly, let's see how Don Hung's doing. <laughs> Ask him what he's up to. Then tell him we're having loads of fun. You've been standing here for half an hour. It's rare to see you like this. Are you worried about those two? Welt is with them. They should be fine. <sighs> Himiko, did you keep a copy of the Stellaron Hunter's transmission? Can I have a look? 
Sure. Not to mention, 45 system hours ago, a Stellaron burst occurred on the Lafu. An unexpected calamity, don't you think? <sighs> what exactly are you Stellaron hunters trying to do? The Cienjo Alliance aren't us. They won't give you time to explain. Once you draw the attention of the hunt, you become their prey. The Alliance will hunt you to the end of the universe. Stop speaking in riddles, Kafka. Say what you have to say. <sighs> it's simple. That Stellaron has nothing to do with us, but the Cienjo is convinced that we're responsible. Stop! Do you know him? The Sancho is in danger. This man, he... If he's on the ship, then Welt, March, and him. Everyone is in grave danger. But... Is he... connected to that past you want to escape? I... I can't leave them down there. It's just... I'm afraid my burden has finally caught up with me, and that everyone is about to be drawn in. Is there anyone who doesn't carry around a past burden? She may not remember it, but even a girl as carefree as March has hers. We tread on a path that is hidden from us. The things we see and the trails we blaze all become our baggage. They weigh us down, but they also give us strength to continue the journey. Try not to dwell on it, Don Hung. The Express spends seven standard days at each stop. Its passengers are allowed to do as they deem fit during that time. Pom Pom and I are more than capable of looking after the Express. If there's something you've got to do, do it now. Better than regretting it further down the line. And you'll come back and travel with us once this is all over, right? Can't send the message out. The network is down, but some functions still work? Virtually nothing has changed since I left. Apart from darkness, this place is all that I remember of the Law Fu. Stay where you are! I can handle this! Emergencies should be dealt with by professionals! In death, revealed in the sanctuary, is but a vision! Break!
With you two risking your lives for me, could I really stay where I am? Nothing, Major. Move carefully. You! <laughs> the dead return! A miracle! <laughs> Nothing, Major. Receive divinity. Repay! Cloud Knights. I was just transferred here from the Yao Ching. I did tell you to let me handle it. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. What if I accidentally hit you? Forgive me, miss, but you were too busy being hit yourself. It's a good thing I joined the fray. <laughs> I was protecting you, more like. It's a Cloud Knight's job to protect others. This area is under martial law. I'm escorting all civilians to safety. Follow me. That was some impressive Cloud Knight spearmanship. Which unit are you from? Huh. Okay. You're a civilian, then. Come with me. Miss Sushang, what exactly has transpired here? In all my trade visits, I've never seen Starskiff Haven in such a state. I, uh... I can't comment on that. I was just ordered to rescue the civilians. Actually, I have no idea either. Anyway, you two just need to come with me. Hey, you're pretty quiet. What's your name? I've got forms to fill out. Can't put your name down as blank. My name is Don Hung. I'm a traveler. I'm on my way to meet up with my friends. I appreciate the help, but I can leave the port on my own. No can do, mister. It's way too late. You won't find anyone at Star's Gift Haven. If your friends made it out, then they'll already be in the safe zone. No need to worry. You'll see them when we get there. Aren't you going to take my name too, miss? You already said it when we were busy fighting. Blah. Thing. Lo Cha, is that right? <laughs> I remember it. Let's go. Stay close, you two. Cloud Knight Sushang will guarantee your safety. Oh, and one more thing. I need you to write your names down later. I don't know too many characters. I might make a mistake. Message not sent? Why not? Long-range communication technology is still improving. Perhaps the presence of the Stellaron is affecting signal transmission. Doesn't seem like it. Everything else is working fine. See? In that case, it looks like someone wants to make things difficult for us. Since Kafka's here, I wouldn't be surprised if this turns out to be that Stellaron Hunter Hacker Girl's handiwork. Oh, you've arrived. <laughs> I 
like your sense of humor, benefactors. Of course I'm happy to see you. When things settle down, I might even get promoted for catching a Stellaron Hunter. Stargazer Navalia is governed by the Artisanship Commission. It took me a while to sort out our paperwork. I got a sense of the situation on my way back. Just like at Cloudford, Stargazer Navalia's Meridian Pin has malfunctioned. The checkpoint there is abandoned, and the garrison is scrambling to locate the Stellaron. With monsters wreaking havoc and the knights scattered, Stargazer Navalia has become a perfect place for the suspect to hide out. <sighs> so we've got a bunch of monsters to deal with, an IPC most wanted Stellaron hunter to catch, and we have to do all that on our own without reinforcements? Ah, well, fair enough. This isn't our first rodeo. I was just making small talk. Never mind the details. I wouldn't say you're entirely on your own. <laughs> when you're ready, let's get going. Shall we, my benefactors? Now what's a hunt without a hound? Kafka is still at large, and the Skyfaring Commission wants this problem to go away. I made a few calls and managed to procure this from the Artisanship Commission. Perfect for hunting down suspects. What can he do exactly? Are we gonna set him loose on Kafka? Yes, and no. This is Deeting, a bionic dog developed by the Artisanship Commission. He has all the five senses of the Foxian race and takes them to another level. Be it tracks or scent, as long as he uncovers a trace, he'll follow it all the way to the end. All we need to do is look for any trace left by Kafka. It doesn't matter how good she is at hiding, Deeting will find her. But before we get started, let's play with his settings a bit and get him ready. To begin with, let's set him to scent detection mode. Tell Deeting to follow the scent of my perfume and see what he can do! to follow these sparkly traces to find Miss Ting Yoon, right? She's not in a hurry, that's for sure. Playing hide-and-seek with us while Kafka's still at large? How time flies. The traces? Where did they go? Is D Ting malfunctioning? <coughs> Got it. He says the wind is too strong here at the port, so it's not easy to follow the scent. It's just the psychic bond between cute girls and cute puppies. Using the environment to hide her traces. Our girl from the Skyfaring Commission sure knows how to put up a challenge. Let's look around and see if we can find any other clues. Or we could ask around? Look how busy this place is. Someone must have seen Miss Ting Yoon. That's not cheating, right? We're just collecting intel.
Yun must have left us these clues, right? Deeding should be able to pick up her traces now. You found me. Deeting's quite handy when it comes to tracking, isn't he? If you pick up traces of Kafka in Stargazer Navalia, just switch him on. Don't let her escape. Who'd have thought that Stargazer Navalia might become so quiet? Long were the nights when the clangor of hammers rose to meet the stars. People used to write poems about the shipwrights here. The Law Fu relies on the star skiffs produced here to transport people and goods. Now that work in the shipyard has stopped, our internal transport and outbound flights might also grind to a halt. <sighs> of course. The silver lining is, I don't have to go on as many trips anymore. You don't seem to worry too much about the Sienjo, Miss Ting Yoon. I wouldn't say that. A good businesswoman doesn't wear her heart on her sleeve. Besides, the Alliance has weathered plenty of challenges. We can handle this situation. Just to warn you, if we do run into Kafka, you'll have to do the fighting benefactors. I'd love to help, but there's very little I can do except cheer you on from the sidelines. <sighs> Playing the Madame Yukon card, are we? That's not very heroic now, is it? Besides, the Madame Helmmaster simply asked me to assist you in navigating around Starskiff Haven. It's no different to any other diplomatic mission or delegate reception. I was never much of a fighter, and I'm not one for risking my life either. Getting Ting into your hands is already beyond the realm of my job description. I'll definitely be putting in a few words next time we meet Yu Kong. Understood. We won't put you out of your comfort zone, Miss Tingyun. When we run into Kafka, we'll do the fighting. And the capturing, for that matter. Thank you for showing us the way. Before d -Ting can start tracking, you'll have to feed him some leads. If Kafka is hiding in Stargazer Navalia, she'll have left behind traces. Let's spread out and look for them. Leave no stone unturned. Shards of a Cloud Knight's weapon. Something really sharp caused this. It must have been Kafka! She's got a scary sword! I know, I know! Let's go and have a look! Uh, is that a grenade? What's that on the side? Uh, it's lipstick. A small something for the lost. Uh, she's clearly taunting us. <laughs> A detang smells something. What's this? A jade seal used by the shipwrights. It opens various passages. It looks like someone used it and then destroyed it. Possibly Kafka. <sighs> we should have enough clues here to get Deeding on the move. No time to lose. Let's give him the scent and let him lead the way. I think we've rounded up all our suspicious clues. But did Kafka leave them behind on accident or on purpose? Uh, she sure did put a lot of work into this gag, and I think we're the punchline. Uh, making us run around like jerks? I bet she's loving this. I can almost hear her whispering, Come and get me. Well, why don't you go and marry her, huh? Don't forget, she's on the IPC's most wanted list. A fugitive that nobody can seem to pin down. And now we've become her prey while she stalks us in the shadows. 
Let's go, benefactors. Time is of the essence. We must be close. The scent! Where did it go? Ah, oh, when the trace of the hunted disappears, the hunter better think twice. It might mean the tables have turned. Kafka! These cloud knights aren't Mara struck. What did you do to them? Just a little persuasion to get them to listen to me. But you know all about that already, don't you? <laughs> oh, what a hassle. This place is too far for the Diviner. See you up ahead. March, not so fast! <laughs> so close and yet so far. You'll have to pick up the pace. Ah, uh, there's no way through here! We need to think of a way to cut her off! Don't worry about locked doors, benefactors. We can use the conveyor belts! Welcome, Astral Expressors. Looks like you caught me. <laughs> Admit it, Kafka. You planned for us to come here. I didn't plan anything. It was the future. We interfere on countless future possibilities and make the best future a reality. You speak too highly of us, Welt. The Stellaron Hunters are merely Destiny's slaves. <laughs> best future? Best for who? As if you'd consider anyone but yourself. If I said best for the universe, would you believe me? <laughs> best for me, naturally. We're taking you to see the General of the Law Fool. You can profess your innocence all you like, but the General will decide your fate. Oh, thanks. But no thanks. I can't stand moving at someone else's pace. We don't have much time. If I were you, I'd make a move before it's too late. <laughs> Fighting is meaningless. Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life and death will be the sanctuary. It's but a vision. Break! Lands at the ready. My turn. <laughs> Here. Zoning out. I can try that again. Watch your feet. I'm on guard. Lance ablaze. Lance forward. Not a scratch. 
try that again. How does that feel? See you later. The ready. Everything is ordained by the stars. Oh, stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! Gotta try hard sometimes. Watch this awesome move! I'm on guard. <laughs> My turn! Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Lands at the ready. Hit. Zoning out. I can help. Watch your feet. Lance ablaze! Lance! Forward! <laughs> Here! I have no interest in conflict. <laughs> Ready? You can't run! How does that feel? Fighting is meaningless. Tough luck running into me! Watch this awesome move! Who invited you? The truth of life and death. With the sanctuary is but a vision. Right now. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Rudimentary. Your every move has been foreseen by the Omniscient. Fushuen, Divination Commission. I'll be taking the criminal from here. Greetings, crew of the Astral Express. This is our first encounter. Though given that I have encountered you in Foresight, perhaps I should say the second. I am Fushuen, Master Diviner at the Divination Commission and one of the Six Charioteers. Far-flung friends ought to be received with fine wine. But alas, the heavens, earth, and body are not aligned for such an occasion. You'll allow for a postponement of the usual formalities, I trust? We should begin with the matter at hand. What the actual heck is she saying? My speech is offensive to you, you need but say. We received an assignment from General Jing Yuan to arrest the Stellaron Hunter. Thank you, Diviner, for coming to our aid, but we must escort the fugitive to the General. An essential. I hold a proclamation from the General here, if you care to see. Upon detaining the Stellaron Hunter, questioning and all further arrangements are to be undertaken by the Divination Commission. <laughs> Did the General just spare us a walk with Kafka? I knew he was a good guy. Understood. However, the General promised that all intel would be shared with us. We have a right to know anything that Kafka divulges. Oh? That 
guy. Can I go one day without him throwing me under the... We won't make things any more complicated than they need to be. We just want to listen in on the questioning. Very well. Urgency demands fluidity. The three of you shall accompany me to the Divination Commission. Uh, can't we do the questioning here? The Stellaron Hunters are slippery. What if she makes a break for it? While I am here, she will not escape. Only the Divination Commission has the methods to make her talk and bring the truth to light. The time has arrived. We must depart. Please proceed. Let's disembark here, benefactors. I may live in relative seclusion, but I can recognize my own territory. Why did you bring us here? Does this look like the Divination Commission to you? No need to yell, Master Diviner. The Meridian Pin is malfunctioning, and I couldn't find the entrance to the Delve. I wanted to get us straight to our destination, but this is the only place I could dock the Star Skiff. Look, Exalting Sanctum. This is a safe place. Let's just walk the rest of the way from here. <laughs> Our hexagrammatic position is fluctuating between the marsh and water trigrams. The vessel is stranded and the way is blocked. I heard the Sienjo can tell your fortune. Is that how they do it? Anyone can count on their fingers. What's wrong with that? We've got ten fingers. May as well use them. I just performed some quick divination, and the hexagram is consistent with our current predicament. The Starskiff cannot take us to the Divination Commission today. Alas, without me in charge to handle the Stellaron Crisis, I dare not even imagine the kind of mess the Commission must be in. It's true. The Divination Commission really can't go a single day without Lady Fu. Uh, that's why you have to develop your talent pool. Otherwise, everything falls apart when you go on vacation. <laughs> Since you are clearly ignorant of the Commission's internal affairs, I shall absolve you of your ridiculous remarks. <laughs> I'm going ahead to make some inquiries. Goodbye. Um, you might not want to hear this, but your general gave us his word. We have to be present when you question Kafka. Uh, you think too little of me. My word is my bond. I will stick to my promise even if this delve collapses. That's very unlikely, by the way. To have this prisoner speak, the Commission must resort to unconventional means. The nature of which is confidential and cannot be disclosed. Forgive me. But I can assure you that the questioning will not begin until you arrive. Even if that means wasting precious time. I have appointed someone to wait for you in front of Exalting Sanctum Plaza. Once we've consolidated our internal affairs, you will be brought into the Divination Commission. Please be patient. Uh, okay. We trust you. <laughs> oh, I think I offended someone again. Uh, don't start. Don't take it to heart, March. Miss Fushen seems like a reasonable lady. I'm sure she's not angry with you. Really? I thought she was pretty icy.
like how you're always pretending to be quiet? Okay, enough chit-chat. I reckon the Divination Commission could be a while. Let's take a look around. Yeah! Ah, oh, that star skiff was pretty cool. There must be loads of interesting things in Exalting Sanctum. Uh, that's the plaza. But... Uh, I can't see anyone waiting for us. Should we look around? What's going on with him? What is that? Everybody stay back! Give him this medicine and make him lie down! I mean, make them lie down! I'll teach you a lesson. Ready to lie down now? <sighs> Thanks for helping to stabilize the patients. Your assertive sedation techniques are quite effective. Assertive sedation techniques? Uh, does she mean beating people up? However, these Cloud Knights were already sick, and now they're injured too. I've got to bandage up their wounds, realign their bones... Ugh, as if I didn't have enough on my plate! Where did you come from, little one? Is your dad around? I don't have a dad. Uh, what about your mom? I don't have a mom either. <sighs> I get it. You think because I'm small, I must be a runaway child. <laughs> Welcome to the Xian Show, my short-lived outsider friends. Appearances can be deceiving here. The Vidyadara race is self-reincarnating. No mama dad required. I've been studying the art of healing ever since I cast off my old shell. You're looking at a recognized, practicing, dedicated doctor! Bellabog kids are making snowmen, while children here are writing prescriptions. Things haven't been very peaceful in the Lawful recently. Make sure you don't... <laughs> ...go running around, right? Well, your general gave us an errand, so I'm afraid we have to. Hmm... Well, seeing as you saved me just now, if you're unlucky enough to acquire any breaks or sprains, I'll treat you for free. As for medicine, I'll give you a 20% discount. Ha! Do you have any idea how many people in the law floor are waiting for an appointment with me? You should count this as a blessing. If I hadn't left my purse at home, I wouldn't have to... <laughs> Enough of that. I have patience to see. Our little miracle worker seems very different from everyone else around. Don't you think, Mr. Yang? So this is the Vidyadara. I've only ever read about them. They're known as the Dragon Race. Not hard to see why. Everyone, please remain calm. This is an announcement from the Realm Keeping Commission General Bureau. Exalting Sanctum is temporarily closing its borders and navigation routes. The details will be outlined in the official bulletin sent to your Jade Abacus soon. If you feel unwell, please report to the Realm Keeping Commission as soon as possible. We have doctors from the Alchemy Commission here who will see you free of charge. Oh, uh, we will be distributing a bag of protein rice and emergency medicine to each of you. You can collect the supplies from me in person, or the Commission can deliver them to your door. Please register with your Jade Abacus bracelet. Oh, you must be an outsider. I see. Please sign here. I heard there's a problem with their Meridian pin. 
Some diviners and stargazers managed to escape the delve. Many of them were terrified. They were muttering about plants and roots. Something terrible must have happened there. Do you have friends trapped in the delve? If you're worried about them, find a diviner and see if they can tell you what happened. I want to say it's all in a day's work, but I've been here for 12 hours already. When will this end? When it rains, it pours. The Artisanship Commission has its own issues. It sounds serious, too. Go and inform the Cloud Knights. See if you can... Oh, my apologies. I'm an orderly from the Realm Keeping Commission. Judging by your dress, you must be visitors to the Law Fu. Sorry, the Xian Zhou is currently caught in unusual circumstances, but the Cloud Knights will resolve the issues as soon as possible. For safety reasons, please stay in your residence and refrain from going out for the time being. If the port is still open, I would suggest you take a boat to Starskiff Haven right away. Though, I heard the route may have been uh, temporarily suspended. Oh, that reminds me. I have a friend with a star skiff and a travel permit. He could help you and your friends get over quickly. The price is fair and negotiable. What do you think? Well now, you must be quite special. Hey, don't spread this around, but this isn't some small-scale maintenance drill. The General has sent the Cloud Knights to check for hidden dangers. You may not need it right now, but if there's any help I can give you, come to me anytime. Excuse me, fella. Hold on a moment. It was only thanks to your help earlier that the Dragon Lady and those exalting Sanctum residents got away unscathed. The Dragon Lady of the Alchemy Commission, Lady Bailu. You mean the child? She's starting to sound like a big shot. A friend in the Skyfaring Commission told me the General commissioned guests to deal with the troubles on the Lafu. You must be the guests. If you don't mind, I hope you can take the time to come to the Realm Keeping Commission. I'd like to talk to you about the issues Exalting Sanctum is currently facing. Oh, that's right. Yeah, forgive my forgetfulness. Glad you came. It's great to have one of the General's distinguished guests helping us out. My Realm Keeping Commission colleagues failed to provide adequate care for the Dragon Lady. I'd like to thank you on behalf of all of them for rescuing her back in Exalting Sanctum Plaza. As I'm sure you're aware, symptoms of Mara have been spreading ever since the Stellaron incident occurred. Thanks to the Ten Lords Commission, being stricken with Mara had long since become a terrifying, but avoidable fate for Sienjo natives. The puzzling thing is that despite the Commission's protection, we're now seeing an increase. More and more citizens, in particular those dealing with great risks and stress like the Cloud Knights, are becoming stricken with Mara. Moreover, the Mara Struck have taken on a horrifying appearance. As if they're turning into some sort of monster. This certainly differs from what I thought I knew about the illness. That appears to be the case. No smoke without fire, as they say. Despite being just a servant of the Realm Keeping Commission, spending a considerable amount of time on the front lines has sharpened my senses to potential dangers. You're a capable person. And since the General entrusted you with locating the Stellaron, it's only a matter of time before you run into Marastruck. If you come across any clues, remember to inform the Realm Keeping Commission straight away. My colleagues and I will handle any situation with haste and to the best of our ability. Speaking of which, have you made any discoveries so far? I... 
I read the letter. I'll be honest with you, I've got no idea how to handle this problem. It's beyond the Realm Keeping Commission's jurisdiction. I contacted the Seat of Divine Foresight, which is overseen by the General. Allow me to introduce Madame Ching Zhu, General Jing Yuan's Chief Counselor. I think it'll be easier if she explains the letter to you. Mm. I read the letter you obtained from the Marastrak. While the Cloud Knights were searching for the Stellaron's whereabouts, I was carrying out the General's orders, tracking down clues on the Marastrak. Thanks to your efforts, we now have a lead. To an outsider, this letter appears to be nothing more than good news detailing a recovery from a chronic illness. However, what is actually being discussed is a violation of the Ten Unpardonable Sins. It's heresy. That's right. Since the Alliance was first established, all medical practices aboard the Sienjo adhere to strict standards that prohibit long life or mutant modifications under the guise of curing. I went through all our files to find information on the experiment in question, and found nothing. I started thinking about how the Alchemy Commission's delve was sealed off. There must be an unspeakable secret locked away there. The author of this letter was likely the Marastruck you defeated. My guess is he was led astray and poisoned while under the pretext of being cured. You saw how he ended up. Such actions remind me of an organization that was eradicated from the Sienjo a thousand years ago. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. They were disciples of the Abundance that sought to restore the way of immortality by unearthing a forbidden remedial formula. It's hard to believe that a group that was wiped out so long ago would suddenly rear its head and create chaos once more. The Seat of Divine Foresight needs to learn all it can about this organization's status before the situation reaches a point of no return. If you come across any similar clues about the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, come and find me at the Seat of Divine Foresight. These kinds of first-hand accounts are exactly what we require. I understand. But all I'm asking is for you to keep an eye out when you have time. The Seat of Divine Foresight always rewards those who contribute to our efforts. I recently received some intel. It seems that certain individuals are taking advantage of the current chaos to lure in outworlders around Exalting Sanctum. Maybe you could start there? We sent an undercover investigator out a few months ago. They provided us with a rough idea of the situation. Unfortunately, it seems suspicions were aroused. We lost contact with the agent. I suspect he was discovered. You are a fresh face in the Lafu, and an outworlder. I would feel more at ease if I could leave this matter with you. Excuse me, guest from another world, please spare me a moment of your time. Do you yearn for immortality? Hmm. I understand. Eternal life is indeed a kind of power, wouldn't you say? Uh, well, not much can be done for you then, brother. <laughs> what a peculiar person you are. I'll tell it to you straight. To Outworlders, I offer the chance of immortality. But perhaps someone like you would be better off joining the Antimatter Legion. Regardless of what you choose, let's keep our voices down, eh? This isn't the kind of conversation you can have out in the open. Before you can grasp absolute power, you must yearn for immortality, don't you think? The problem is that the Xianzhou Alliance doesn't care one bit about the well-being of short-life species. They stubbornly blockade the glorious path to immortality. My name is Green Hibiscus. I came to Exalting Sanctum in hopes of a fated encounter with one such as yourself. 
One who is also on the road to immortality. What do you say? How about we find a more suitable spot to talk about all this? Let's make haste. There are too many people here to linger. Here we are. This is the place. Uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. If it were so easy, we'd be a far larger group, and there'd be no need for secrecy. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am a member of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. I was unable to expose my true identity in Exalting Sanctum, but now I can reveal everything. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus is a devout group, holding firm in their belief that Merciful Medicus is the one ultimate faith. As followers, we refer to ourselves as disciples, dedicated to our cause. If you wish to gain the means to immortality, then you must become a disciple. But to become a disciple, you must first pass several small trials. Please excuse me. Our expansion has unfortunately attracted the attention of those devilish archer followers. If we are not careful, the consequences could be unthinkable. No need to be concerned about him. Much like yourself, he is here to undergo the trials. Ah! Only those led astray by followers of the devilish archer could despise Merciful Medicus. Sadly, there are many such people. Too many. Every species yearns for the favor and curing of Merciful Medicus, regardless of whether they have heard of the abundance or not. Foxians yearn to cure themselves of their 300-year lifespan. The Fidiatera yearn to cure themselves of the pain of reincarnation and lack of progeny. As for Sienjo natives, they long to cure themselves of the torture of becoming Mara-struck. Of course, we know that this torture is rather a kind of blessed evolution. To return to your question, Sanctus Medicus can cure the aging that short-life species face, along with disease and death. Sanctus Medicus can do for you what they did for the Sienjo natives. What you seek, you will surely find. Merciful Medicus is magnanimous. They do not lightly refuse a prayer. As such, the initiation trials for the disciples of Sanctus Medicus are nothing arduous. All you must do is transcribe this copy of Thousand-Handed Merciful Medicus' Salvation 500 times by hand. This will allow your brothers and sisters to trust your faith, and you to become a disciple. This scripture is central to the disciples. You must maintain a pious heart during the transcription. It would be best if you could memorize the text. Of course. This is but the first trial. Once you have become a disciple, you will undergo numerous others. Excessive! The old rules dictated that the text be copied 50,000 times. I myself undertook such a feat. Nowadays, the Master takes greater pity on the common people. Hence, the number has been reduced to a mere 500. you long enough. I know you. You're General Jingyuan's honored guest. Wait, 
Wait a second. You're here undercover, right? So am I. I'm a Cloud Knight from the Exalting Sanctum Garrison. That green hibiscus has been sneaking around spreading heretical lies for a while now. That's why I'm here, to spy on him. They were suspicious of me as soon as I arrived. It took a lot of effort to make them believe I wanted to become a disciple. <laughs> I have my reasoning. Cults like this want to recruit people with influence in law and order. I wanted them to know I was a Cloud Knight. Always know your enemy. Shh! Keep your voice down! These disciples don't miss much. If they discover us, we won't make it out of here. <sighs> you can trust me with the transcription. I spent over 150 years pen-pushing in the Seat of Divine Foresight before I became a Cloud Knight. I could do this in my sleep. Listen carefully. I help you copy the text, you cover for me, and I get word out to the Seat of Divine Foresight. Take your time, still your mind, and transcribe the text. Allow the beautiful enlightenment of thousand-handed merciful Medicus's salvation to permeate your being. You're finished? So soon? Let me see. Ah. Huh. Yes, it would appear you are finished. A fast and accurate transcription. It seems you are destined for immortality. Calm yourself. The initiation is divided into two steps. You and the Cloud Knight have completed the first. Now, only the second remains. Sure, but can it wait till tomorrow? I'm supposed to be on duty right now. They'll get suspicious if I don't head back soon. No need to worry. The second step is extraordinarily simple. It'll all be over soon enough. The Disciples' initiation is governed by the following principle. Never accept who you suspect, and never suspect who you accept. So, it's time for you two to battle it out. Whoever survives will officially become a Disciple. Excellent! The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus love enthusiastic new blood. Well then, show us what you're made of. Whoa, 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 you're kidding, right? We came here to lengthen our lifespans, not shorten them! You can't just make us fight like this! We aren't forcing you to fight. By all means, refuse if you wish. But we won't possibly be able to let either of you leave. I... Mm, fine, fine, but at least let me prepare? I've never done anything like this before. Very well, but you'll need to ask your opponent, too. Good. Then prepare yourselves. Time is precious. Make it quick. Listen, I have an idea that will let you join the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus and let me get the heck out of here in one piece. You and I fight, and I lose to you. I pretend that you finish me off. Then you pretend to help them remove my body by dragging me out of here. That way, we both accomplish our objectives. Oh, um, <clears throat> I've seen your skills. Um, please don't mess up and actually kill me. Oh, just... Ugh, whatever, I got myself into this. Let fate decide, just try and hold back a little, okay? So, have you prepared yourselves? Are you ready to fight? And you, Cloud Knight? <laughs> I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm ready. Then, let's begin. Well then... Take this! What magnificent skill! He was fierce, but no match for you! 
I'm glad you prevailed. That Cloud Knight waltzed straight up to us in uniform and asked if he could join. Hardly a convincing spectacle. I doubt I ever could have trusted him. Purple Chrysanthemum, Blue Peach. Find somewhere to dispose of the body. Oh? You've dealt with this kind of thing before? Not at all. As I said earlier, disciples never suspect who we accept. Hmm. This does have its advantages. Our brothers and sisters have been proselytizing and exalting sanctum over the last few days. We may have attracted the attention of the devils. Having you dispose of the Cloud Knight will be safer. As such, this can be your first mission as a disciple. You take an active approach to getting things done. I'll be sure to pass that on to my superiors. In any case, my hearty congratulations on your admission to the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. From now on, you will be known by the code name Grey Peony. Well, Grey Peony, let's depart separately to avoid attracting attention. We'll rendezvous at a different location later. Until then. <laughs> I did a good job playing dead, didn't I? <laughs> Those people are out of their minds. Watch your step next time you're around them. Wait, you you weren't holding back? Uh, enough with the jokes already. It's a miracle either of us is alive. I should report back to the seat of divine foresight. Stay safe, friend. Hibiscus agreed to meet me here, but there's no sight of him. What gifts? There's a letter here. What's this on the envelope? Gray peony? Ugh, this must be from Green Hibiscus. Disciples sure know how to keep a low profile. Looks like I'll need to help them complete this mission. If they're looking to intercept mail, I should probably start by searching near Exalting Sanctum's Psycrane stance.
Hmm, not on this stand. Let's check a different one. What's written on this package? Seat of Divine Foresight Urgent? This is it. The mail the disciples want to intercept. Hmm. Seems like it's encrypted somehow. Makes sense. This is critical intelligence after all. Let's see if I can crack the code. Code cracked. Huh. It's an internal order from the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Judging from these urgent instructions, the Disciples are aware of a seat of divine foresight operation to infiltrate their ranks. No wonder Green Hibiscus was so eager to intercept this. I'll use my phone to make a copy, and then hand it over to Green Hibiscus. Of Moon, this is the reliable disciple I mentioned to you, Grey Peony. Grey Peony, this is Mav Moon, the head of our operations in Exalting Sanctum. It seems you have some impressive skills in your arsenal. What? How dare you? Easy, Hibiscus. I like this kid. You seem like you've got it all figured out. What brings you to the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? Good. Life is a miracle and a blessing. Any futile attempt to forsake it is a disgraceful betrayal. You have been enlightened to the significance of immortality. You have already surpassed those shameful mortals. Here, take this prescription. Through this medicine, you will become like me. You will be able to break the shackles that the devilish archer author has used to chain your soul. You will gain unbridled power and freedom. The disciple responsible for creating medicinal pellets heard of your exploits. They prepared the prescription for you personally. Some of the ingredients can be purchased at an apothecary, but others will require you to come up with your own solution. Given your strength, that shouldn't pose a problem. Do you have any questions? I don't know. I've heard our members are in the tens of thousands. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus has a flat organizational structure. The head of each area reports directly to the master. I know nothing about what goes on elsewhere. The benefit is that even if our enemies were to wipe out the Exalting Sanctum branch, it wouldn't affect our brothers and sisters in other areas. That's sensitive information. I know who they are, but for their security, I can't reveal their identities. It's not that I doubt your loyalty, Grey Peony. It's like I said, security. The boss? You mean the master? You'll meet them, but for now there's no rush. All in good time. Keep fulfilling your duties, as you have been. With your strength, You'll have an audience with the Master in no time. 
I'm ashamed to admit it, but I once worked alongside those devils. I trained in spear techniques for almost a century. I nearly became a Cloud Knight instructor. But I was trapped in a weak mortal shell. I was never able to surpass the final barrier that separated me from the martial arts geniuses. Fortunately, the draft of Draconic Surge, the prescription you hold in your hand, rescued me. Once I took that medicine, I became more powerful than any mortal could ever dream of. Now, everything has changed. Jersene and his pitiful spearmanship are no more. All that remains is a loyal disciple of Merciful Medicus. Wait. You recognize me? Where do you know me from? Your face changed when you heard my name. M M Mav Moon, sir. We have a problem. I suspect this person may be the agent who's been looking for you. Idiot! What kind of trials are you running? You let an agent infiltrate our ranks? I, I I couldn't have known, sir. I I witnessed this person slay a cloud knight before my very eyes. Detestable. The devilish archer author allows these pitiful mortals to face death without fear. Self-sacrifice is their way of fooling us into opening our doors. In that case, divine foresight, devil, it's time for you to meet your demise. No mercy of Sanctus Medicus. Grant me a body impervious to steel, the courage of a thousand armies, a strength that ten thousand foes cannot suppress. You think you're a match for me, devil? Your death is inevitable. Surrender, and I'll make it quick. So Mav Moon was the agent that Ching Zhu lost contact with. He joined the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. I should go to the Seat of Divine Foresight and tell Ching Zhu. I don't know if this mission was a success or a failure. Ah. Uh. I'm glad to see you've returned in one piece. So? What happened? Did everything go as planned? Don't worry. Your operation was a success. Although your identity was ultimately exposed, you gained a wealth of invaluable intelligence. On top of that, you managed to get out without a scratch. <sighs> I never imagined that your scene would choose the path of evil. You did the right thing. I'm afraid this is how the Plague's author operates. Using notions of power and life to draw countless people like your scene away from bright futures. Down a path of no return. You've managed to shine a light on the darkness of the enemy. With this intelligence, the Seed of Divine Foresight will be able to improve its strategy. And for all your efforts, please accept this reward. Is there anything else you'd like to know about? The current state. <sighs> I'm afraid we know next to nothing. We dispatched agents, but they were only able to linger on the edges of the organization. Your operation is the furthest anyone's managed to infiltrate. The Seed of Divine Foresight is still striving to answer one question. Is this but the resurgent shadow of an organization silenced a thousand years ago? Or have they been lurking in the darkness all along? Whatever the case, this sudden re-emergence hints at a hidden conspiracy. It's troubled me deeply over recent few months. It's hard to tell what all of this is building towards. Not at all. 
The disciples' secret letter makes it sound as if we infiltrated their ranks in great numbers. The reality is that only a handful of agents have successfully slipped into the organization. And the majority of them lacked the strength you had to make it back unscathed after their identity was exposed. They didn't have the wisdom and good fortune to gain the organization's trust quickly. An agent can't actually consume those pellets of the disciples. Doing so would mean the end of their life as they knew it. The point is, there hasn't been anyone like you who managed to delve into the group's core and obtain so much first-hand information. Thousand-Handed Merciful Medicus's Salvation is a manuscript transcribed from a sacred text. I don't know where the disciples obtained it. It likely consists of fragments of banned works from the Befall era. As I see it, there isn't anything particularly alarming about the text. It recalls the acts of the plague's author's warped creatures from an equally warped perspective. The scripture doesn't have the power to lead people astray. They do that to themselves. But it does feed lies and false hope. The prescription you acquired is beyond my knowledge. There are a few reliable alchemists that reside in Exalting Sanctum. I'd like to ask you to consult with them on the particulars of the prescription. This will allow the Seed of Divine Foresight to have a clear target for creating an antidote. Given that the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus has become aware of our operation, it's about time the Seed of Divine Foresight reeled in its net. If you turn up any details about the prescription, feel free to come back and find me anytime. Why, hello there. Anything I can help you with? So, this is official Seat of Divine Foresight business, eh? Then I'll do everything I can to assist you. <laughs> Let's take a look at this prescription you mentioned. Hmm. Mm. If this request had come from anywhere else, it would have seemed like a joke. That the Seat of Divine Foresight only deals in the serious. I can't understand this prescription. And I imagine that other alchemists won't be able to make sense of it either. I recommend you go directly to the chief alchemist, Lady Don Shu. Lady Don Shu is renowned for her unique line of reasoning. She's proposed several prescriptions that would have been incomprehensible to us if she hadn't explained the pharmacology. Still, those same prescriptions have always been able to produce miraculous effects. Lady Don Shu is a truly gifted alchemist. All the more amazing given her sightlessness, wouldn't you say? Lady Don Shu likes to pass the time over at Sinwood Pavilion. I'm sure you'll run into her if you head that way. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Everyone does. You're the hero who rescued the Vidyadara healer lady in Exalting Sanctum. I heard from other alchemists you have a prescription you wish me to assess. Can you read it to me? Don't worry. I've trained myself to remember everything I hear. A strange and dangerous prescription, but I believe I understand the pharmacology. It involves drawing upon the strength of long scions to attain the power of... Ascension. The specifics, however, will require further investigation. This will take some time. I could hardly happen upon Vidyadara Bone Marrow and test the prescription myself, could I? Leave your contact details with me. When I've completed my assessment of the pharmacology, I'll get in touch with you. What does that mean? It's just a picture. Are we supposed to... Meet someone there? 
It's like one of those messages a kidnapper sends in a horror movie. That's enough of that. Come on, let's go. Hurry up, Chingcha. We'll be fossils by the time you're finished. I heard there was a disaster in the Divination Commission's Delve? I'm surprised you're in the mood to play right now, Ching Chue. Even if the sky was gonna collapse on the Divination Commission, the Master Diviner would be there to hold it up. What she lacks in height, she more than makes up for in stamina. Anyway, I didn't come here just to play. She ordered me to wait here for our guests. Time is precious. I'm simply multitasking. It's the place in the photo, all right. Is this... a games parlor? Uh, what kind of problem can they possibly be facing? <laughs> Isn't this hand a problem? I have the worst luck. Oh, uh, hi there! I can tell just by looking at you that you're the Divination Commission's guest. But ah, triplet! But folks from the realm keeping commission descended on the area. It's too loud over there now. Pass, pass. So I thought to myself, wouldn't it be better to meet somewhere quieter, four of a kind? And wouldn't that be more fun too? Better to show you the real exalting sanctum and introduce you to a true Sam Joe pastime, celestial jade. <laughs> now that my wish has been fulfilled, there's nothing holding us back. Follow me, honored guests. I must apologize for your long wait, honored guests. It wasn't too long. Seeing your enthusiasm for this Celestial Jade game has stoked my curiosity. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. You clearly have excellent taste. If you're interested, I can show you how to play. It's great fun. Sure. Mr. Yang, is this really the best time? Ah, oh, look. Is that a... It's an ancient tree. We call it the Ambrosial Arbor. It was once the Sienjo La Fu's prized treasure. I didn't know the Skyfaring Commission were history buffs. Not bad. Younger generations usually don't know much about it. It's said that the Ambrosial Arbor is an ancient remnant from where the Sienjo roamed the ether. From a distance, it looks like half a tree stump. But according to records of the early nation, in its prime, it wound into the heavens and from it celestial bodies hung. Meaning? It means the tree was as tall as the sky and stars hung from its branches. So, how big was it? Bigger than the Express? Bigger than Herta Space Station? No, that can't be right. Stars hung from its branches. Then, how did it fit in the Sienjo? Exactly. Let's just say it was bigger than your imagination. Anyway, it's just a legend. I see this view every day on my way to work. I'm kind of bored of it. Let's go. Just a heads up, please don't go running off once we're inside. You may be the Master Diviner's guests, but she hates people who don't abide by rules and regulations. Oh, and people who ask too many questions, not to mention... Please, don't push her buttons. We're just here for the questioning. We'll leave as soon as it's over. So strange. Oh, let me guess, the gate isn't working? 
I don't understand. It's never been locked before. And no one told me to take a key. Hey, I know the food here sucks, but that's no reason to shut the gate on our guests. Are you really from the Divination Commission? No way. She's already demoted me to managing the repository. What else does she want from me? There's no need to panic, okay? This isn't the only entrance into the Divination Commission. I know an emergency access. Here it is. You seem familiar. Is this where you come to avoid doing work? You're pretty sharp. Divination Commission staff call this the Loafing Gate. When there's nothing to do, we often sneak out from here and spend a few hours lazing around outside. A few hours? Ah. <sighs> Do you have any vacancies? Ugh, the Stellaron corrosion. What's going on? Great, this gate won't open either. We've kept the Master Diviner waiting. No doubt she'll blame unreliable Qingzhe for messing up once again. I knew I'd offended that Diviner. That's why she sent this girl to help us. Miss Qingzhe. If you don't mind, may I take a look? Huh? Oh, uh, no need. Actually, I was just being polite. I don't see why not. Let me show you. This thing is pretty fun. Wow, you're amazing, Mr. Yang. You handled that well for an outsider. I officially hand over the title of Keeper of the Loafing Gate to you. Uh, anyone here surprised? Anyone? Here comes trouble. Uh, can't we run around to them for a change? This is the Matrix of Prescience, a large-scale Jade Abacus calculation terminal. It's the pride and joy of the Divination Commission. <clears throat> We've heard the term Jade Abacus a few times now. Would you mind explaining what it is, Miss Qingchu? A Jade Abacus is just... A Jade Abacus! <sighs> That's a good question, Mr. Yang. It might take me a minute to give you an answer. Let me think. The book, Glimpses into the Beyond, describes it as... Living Jade engraved with symbols for divination into the unknown. Just like engraving a seal, the craftsmen of the Xianzhou Artisanship Commission carve faint symbols into pieces of jade and then insert them into machines to get them to operate according to a certain intention. Some jade abacuses are small enough to fit inside bracelets and jewelry. We put the bigger ones into instruments of calculation, so we can simulate the future and learn from the past. Take the Matrix of Prescience here as an example. As long as sufficient information is provided, it can answer questions on anything. From the evolution of natural phenomena to the metabolism of living things. They say the theory behind the symbols was handed down by Noose, the Wisdom Walker. The principles are so profound that in the Divination Commission, only the Master Diviner truly understands them. It sounds like similar technology. Maybe we'll get a better understanding if we see the manufacturing process with our own eyes. I'm afraid that's impossible. The Artisanship Commission's Hall of Jadeology keeps a close watch over the jade carving process. But if you're interested, there's a shop selling jade abacus jewelry in Starskiff Haven. I can show you around when I'm free. <laughs> Did you hear that? She said she's taking Mr. Yang jewelry shopping. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Anyway, don't dwell on names. As long as the machine works, what does it matter whether it's a jade abacus or a computer? Just like today, would it have mattered if Bai Chue had brought you here instead of Qing Chue? It makes no difference at all. We're almost at the Matrix of Prescience Core. The Master Diviner should be waiting. Diviner Fu. How are things progressing? We are fluctuating between the Heaven and Thunder trigrams. 
A step forward bridges no distance hence. And for those who don't speak, Fushen? <clears throat> it's an utter disaster. How's that for a divination commission fortune? The Matrix of Prescience has stopped operating, and the symbols have dimmed. There are Stellaron spirits wreaking havoc inside the Commission, and the Cloud Knights are struggling to protect civilians. I want to restore the Matrix of Prescience, but I have no forces available. And on top of all of that, General, we still have to deal with the Stellaron Hunter you handed to us. If that's not an utter disaster, then I don't know what is. <laughs> but your Fu Shen, the seer, the boundless omniscient, bringing luck and avoiding misfortune is your strong suit, isn't it? You don't need to flatter me, General. It's natural for fortune to fluctuate. There's no escaping it. The Divination Commission simply does its best to uncover the good and the bad and then make the right decisions. We have no magical means to turn the tide. And that is precisely why we need you in charge. When it comes to handling clairvoyant Stellaron hunters, who better than Fu Shen the Seer? As for reinforcements, you didn't think I'd be unprepared, did you? Look, help has just arrived. Master Diviner, I brought you the guests. Though, it wasn't your order I received. <sighs> so general. Even guests are on the payroll these days? Well, since they're here already, I may as well make use of them. Entering the Matrix of Prescience without my permission is a breach of protocol. <sighs> Would be an ungracious thing to say in the present circumstances. I admit I'm pleasantly surprised to see you here. Jinchue is often unreliable, but she comes through for us when the need arises. It's nice to have people I can entrust with difficult matters. I'm not like the General, and you don't even belong to my commission. I certainly won't be bossing you around. No need for the formalities. We heard what the General said. If you need something from us, just say the word. Very well, then I'll keep this brief. The Divination Commission is currently understaffed. I need your help to restart the Matrix of Prescience as space terminals. And eliminate the Stellaron spirits along the way. Xing Chue will accompany you. She'll be in charge of restarting the terminal. As for eliminating the spirits... Psst! <clears throat> I hath divined our future! We are destined to be errand runners! Forever. What? Which magic word? <sighs> the universal one? Please? Oh... Uh, please... Oh, good enough. Let me see... This is the Temporal Terminal. Observes the potential of the Temporal Plane. They say this terminal is designed to retrieve information related to time. Should do it. What? You just matched up those symbols. Is that it? The more complex something is, the more important it is to keep it simple. Don't you think? 
Oh, if it's so simple, why didn't your master diviner come and do it herself? <laughs> Maybe deep down she just wants to be lazy once in a while. Like me. Oh, what the heck is this? It looks like a walking gate. Take it easy. There's nothing supernatural on the Sea and Joe. It's an aromaton. It's guarding the Matrix of Prescience. They're stationed at various strategic places. Uh, I feel like it needs a sign saying mortals forbidden or something. Are you sure it won't fly into a rage if we walk past it? We're here by order of the Master Diviner to restart the Matrix of Prescience. Friends, not foes. Passage prohibited. Uh, March! You should join the Divination Commission! Quick, do something! This must be the Spatial Terminal. They say this terminal is designed to retrieve information related to space. You probably could have guessed that. Oh, let me guess. Time, space... I bet the next terminal is energy related. Darn, the Karma Terminal. They say this terminal is designed to establish causal relationships. Ugh, we did it. All three terminals activated. Let's go back to the core and report to the Master Diviner. Well done, all of you. I can sense the Matrix of Prescience symbols re-illuminating. Now, to interrogate Kafka. Those of you in the core may feel a few... impacts. Are you ready? <laughs> Is this really necessary? I said I'd cooperate with you. I have no interest in the words of wanted criminals, especially those skilled in the art of manipulation. So, say what you will. I'm here to witness the divination of the Matrix of Prescience. The Divination Commission has ways of extracting the truth, and they're far more effective than a conversation. Then please, Master Diviner, witness my destiny. Not what you were expecting. I can't believe it. But the Matrix of Prescience cannot be wrong. Kafka has nothing to do with Estelaron, but you... It's you. I'd never have thought it. Ask her yourself. Take as long as you wish. I must report this to the General immediately. Please excuse me. You go ask her. I know you still have many questions for Kafka yourself. Hi. <sighs> you haven't changed a bit. I'm sorry you have to see me in such a sorry state. Really? Well, that's good. I wouldn't want to affect your image of me. 
I didn't talk to you on the train because I knew you and I would get to talk alone here. Worth waiting for, don't you think? You seem to have a lot to ask me. Elio said he foresaw three questions, but they would be the same in essence. If I were to hear one of them, I would then tell you the objective of this trip in all its detail. Since you asked one of the three questions, it means everything is going smoothly. Are you ready to hear my answer? Sienjo's Stellaron problem is not directly linked to us. But if you look at it from Elio's perspective, you can't say the Stellaron hunters are completely innocent. We foresaw all this long ago, but chose to remain indifferent until the time was right for us to get involved. Diviner Fu was surprised because she discovered three truths. One, the Stellaron hunters are not enemies of the Sienjo. You know this now, though you refuse to believe it. Two, someone else brought the Stellaron into the Sienjo and activated it. A result of both internal unrest and external aggression. Traitors on the Lafu and enemies from outside want to overthrow the Sienjo. The Master Diviner is in a hurry to find the General, presumably to inform him of this fact. However, that's all the Master Diviner knows, because Elio withheld key pieces of information from me. He foresaw the Divination Commission using the Matrix of Prescience against me. To guard against setbacks, he ensured that I knew only what he wanted the Sienjo Alliance to know in this moment. As for number three, even in their wildest dreams, the Sienjo Alliance could never have guessed it. <laughs> if the Stellaron Hunters aren't the cause of all this, then why are Blady and I even here? We're here for you. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It's no wonder Fu Shen doesn't believe it either. But the Matrix of Prescience doesn't lie. The answer is just that bizarre. The Stellaron Hunters appearing here, Blady getting arrested, me being lured to the Matrix of Prescience. It was all to bring you, the Astral Express crew, to the Sienjo. In the future that Elio chose, the power of the hunt is indispensable. And that's why the Astral Express crew had to come to the La Fu and achieve something important for the Sienjo. You had to establish a connection with the Alliance. And that's why I had to trick you into coming here. I needed you to meet the Lafu's general in person and to help him resolve the Stellaron crisis. I needed the Alliance to owe you a favor. That way, in the future, at the most critical moment, the Sienjo will offer you their help. What do you think? Surprised? The notorious Stellaron Hunters did all that just to make you a hero of the Sienjo? <laughs> Quite the plot twist, don't you think? <sighs> like I said, Elio withheld key pieces of information from me. The future holds endless possibilities. Knowing the right thing at the wrong time could spoil all our hard work. There is only one thing I can tell you about the future. In the best and the worst cases, you will eventually have to face Nanook the Destruction. And when that time comes, you will need all the help you can get. 
It will be a brutal struggle of Ionic proportions. Proportions that neither you, nor I, nor the Astral Express will ever be able to reach. In the vast majority of futures, that's when destiny ends. But, if we follow Elio's plan, there may be a glimmer of hope on the horizon. You know, even eons can be killed. Locha, hey, you didn't finish telling us about the propagation. Keep going, it's interesting. So, neons can die, huh? Weird. I thought they were invincible. <laughs> there is no true invincibility or immortality in the world. Such exaggerations are born of the perspectives of ordinary beings. Nonetheless, ordinary beings could not have orchestrated the fall of the propagation. That eon was slain at the hands of another eon. I don't understand. They're all eons. Why do they want to fight? You... Are you really from the Xianzhou? Other eons aside, surely you must know the story of Lan and Yaosha. Isn't destroying the Eon Yausha the Alliance's cherished aim? Of course I know. Well, I, I know a little. My mom made me practice with swords all day. I, I didn't really go to school. In that case, let's just change the subject. If you don't know about the feud between the hunt and the abundance, I'm afraid there's just too much to explain. Fine. How's this for a subject? What's in the box? Oh, this one? <laughs> it's a casket, more commonly known as a coffin. It's for containing the remains of the deceased. The deceased? Aren't you a merchant? Yes, indeed. This is just part of my job. I was asked to deliver this coffin to the Xianzhou. Ah, I'd quite forgotten. For long life species, death is probably a distant concept. Nope. The Cloud Knights spend a lot of time on the battlefield. Death is a common occurrence. It's just, we don't put bodies in boxes. Uh, coffins. In the Sienjo, people go to the Hall of Karma in the Ten Lords Commission and consecrate the names and jade abacuses of the dead. And that's our way of saying goodbye. The Foxians and the Vidyodora have their own ceremonies. Foxian soldiers place their dead in star skiffs and then let them drift out into the stars. They call it the returning. As for the Vidyodora, they're more mysterious. They say that when a Vidyadara is very old or has a fatal injury, they turn into an egg that looks like a pearl. And when the shell breaks, they come out looking young again. My mom calls the Vidyadara long scions. When I was young, she told me stories of how the Vidyadara could turn into dragons. I don't know if that's true. What do you know? Silent but deadly speaks. Your mother is right. The Vidyadava are long scions. They are descendants of the Eon of Permanence. That was why some, but not all, could turn into dragons. The power was a rare inheritance, passed down only to those who could successfully complete numerous rites and challenges. For the inheritor, it was hard to say whether it was a blessing or a curse. Ah, I've heard the story of Long the Permanence and their descendants. 
Many myths and legends praise the Eon for a rich and immortal life. But for some reason, the Eon disappeared among the stars without a trace. Almost as if they had never existed, leaving only their descendants. Every life has its limit. Even the eons are not truly immortal and will eventually reach the end of their lives. Uh, let me ask you one more question. Do you know the person in the coffin? <sighs> yes. A friend? No. So, uh, the sweetheart? <laughs> oh, miss, whatever gave you that impression? The individual in the coffin is neither friend nor relative. We met only once. By chance, I made someone a promise, and so I have to run this errand. Let's leave it at that, shall we? I think we've all had enough rest. Mara struck. It looks like someone's hurt. Wait. Let's think before we act. <laughs> Silent but deadly. Locha, let's charge in together. If we take them out quickly, we can rescue the girl. <laughs> what happened to us letting you handle it? I've only got two hands! Please, I'll wangle you a prize for your bravery or something when it's all over! Enough. Let's go! <sighs> Miss, are you okay? What do you think? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't see any blood, so I, I thought you were okay. You're... Puppet. My motor is broken. I can't move. Are you a Cloud Knight? Good. Take me to the Realm Keeping Commission. I, uh. Locha, silent but deadly. I'm afraid we have to delay things again. This lady is one of the judges of the Ten Lords Commission. As a Cloud Knight, I must prioritize her orders. I'm sorry. If I'd known, I wouldn't have got you to come with me. You'd probably be there by now if you'd gone by yourself. I happen to have some medical knowledge. Perhaps I can treat the young lady's injuries? Well, it's just... she's a puppet. I think we should just take her to the Realm Keeping Commission? Don't worry, Miss Sushang. Leave it to me. You might get an aching or numbing sensation, but it shouldn't be too painful. Do you think you can hold still? It won't work. My body is mechanical, not flesh and blood. Be it mechanical or organic, we're still dealing with composite substances. I just hope you'll tolerate my methods. <sighs> huh. Curious. Uh, how... Oh, what kind of medical knowledge is this? Abundance. Hmm. Very good. We, uh, no longer need to return to the Realm Keeping Commission. The mission continues. As a judge in the employ of the Ten Lords Commission, I am forbidden from interfering in the affairs of outsiders. However, seeing as you came to my aid, a word of advice. Leave as soon as possible. I came to address the root of our crisis by arresting a fugitive, a Stellaron Hunter. This villain possesses exceptional swordsmanship and wields a divine weapon. They are extremely dangerous. Huh. If it hadn't been for a strange accident, my wake span might have been cut short. 
strange accident? Huh. Come with me. I've never seen anything like it. You know, even eons can be killed. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's not what we want. I just want to tell stories from the past. Stories about eons that have fallen. Lon the Permanence, Drilla the Beauty, Anna the Order, Tazeron the Propagation, Akivili the Trailblaze. Hmm? These names were once known all over the universe. And now they've all but disappeared, leaving behind only masterless paths. And currently, there are three ways an eon can perish known to humanity. One, paths with overlapping concepts will eventually collide, and the broader path will engulf the narrower one. That's how Enna the Order was assimilated by Shipe the Harmony. Two, in a war between eons, the stronger side will annihilate the weaker one. That's how Tazeranth the Propagation fell. Under the guidance of the hunt, the Sienjo Alliance travels the universe exterminating abominations cultivated by the Abundance. So, the Sienjo too are engaged in this process. After the disappearance of Long the Permanence, Tazeranth divided the Eon's path. In the process, Tazeranth became a new Eon, known as the Propagation. My understanding is that Tazeranth, or Imperator Insectorum to some, didn't last long. When the swarm disaster began to take hold, Tazeranth was attacked and killed by multiple Eons. What do you think? Fascinating stories, no? <laughs> They're the kind of stories that folks on the straight and narrow would never tell you. Hold on. Any minute now. <laughs> It's begun. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go, Blady. Two more places to visit. <laughs> If what she said is true, we won't have to explain anything. Hey, did she brainwash you? Wasn't this the dead tree Ching Chue showed us earlier? How did it grow all of a sudden? <sighs> amazing, absolutely amazing. Even the long-lived might not witness something like this in their lifetime. I'm so lucky. Such extraordinary energy. It's the Stellaron. Mr. Yang, do you mean the Stellaron is making the Ambrosial Arbor grow? Yes, the Stellaron the Cloud Knights are searching for must be causing this anomaly. Unless Kafka deceived the Matrix of Prescience. Stay calm, Diviner Fu. 
The matrix of prescience does not lie. The logic you have laid out concerning Kafka makes sense. It has helped me to fill in another piece of the puzzle. I agree there is a hostile external force at work on the Lofu. The Stellaron didn't appear out of thin air. Someone managed to sneak it onto the ship. As for the culprits behind the Lofu's internal strife, I believe we are dealing with the so-called Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, that shadowy organization of the denizens of abundance. Kafka's revelations confirm my suspicions. You... General, when did you have these suspicions? The moment the planter of the Stellaron revealed himself. The Sienjo has the blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter, and only another Eon Emanator would be capable of sneaking onto this ship without my knowing. We are dealing with an external threat. The Stellaron corrosion continues to flood into the ship, and yet it bypassed both the seat of divine foresight and the shackling prison. There is forethought here. Our enemy must have had access to Lafu intelligence for things to unfold in this way. It is evident now. The Stellaron hunters aren't the ones behind the curtain. No. As soon as I set eyes on Blade, it was clear to me. But why is he here? And why did he draw the Astral Express? Hm. That piece of the puzzle still eludes me. Nevertheless, Lady Fu, your intel means the puzzle is more complete than it was before. <laughs> These Stellaron hunters are a captivating group. Such lengths to get the Sienjo and the Express onto the same track. <laughs> Who would have believed it? General, we must retain all urgency. The Ambrosial Arbor. It's the Stellaron. No need to search high and low. The traders have planted it in the Ambrosial Arbor's delve, thereby causing the tree to grow once again. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus couldn't hold off any longer. Every crisis is a turning point. A problem is easier to resolve when you know where it lies. Am I coming up with a plan again? Of course. I'm sure you have a countermeasure at the ready, Master Diviner. From my perspective, convening the Cloud Knights is our immediate priority. We must head into the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor, expel the Stellaron spirits, and prevent the Arbor's resurrection. Mmm, as ever the Master Diviner's Omnisha provides for the fastest solution. However, sometimes speed is not everything. I have known the Stellaron's location for a while now. So why have I held back our forces? General? Well? You're a scoundrel. <laughs> Pulling up the grass requires removing the roots. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus have chosen to make their move now which means the Cloud Knights have the situation under control and the traders have run out of patience. Now is the time to capture them all in one fell swoop. You've been sitting on that this whole time? How will you justify the losses if something goes wrong, General? Please, Lady Fu. I still have forces to deploy. We were in need of extra hands, and the Stellaron Hunters were kind enough to bring us together with the Astral Express. How could I look the other way? Oh, that massive tree has suddenly sprung to life! It's my fault. I had higher expectations of the General. Please! We can't keep getting them to do everything for us! Since when did we run out of people on the Law Fu? You... Why are you staring at me? Do I need to remind you, General, that the Ambrosial Arbor's access point is a closely guarded secret? Allowing Outworlders would be... A violation of the rules and regulations. I would like to remind you, Lady Fu, 
that the Sienjo comes before its rules and regulations, all the more so in times of crisis. As such, I am about to make a decision that runs counter to those rules and regulations. Oh, uh, decisions plural. <laughs> what a rare pleasure. Lady Fu, I hereby issue you with the military tally. The Cloud Knights will be under your control. You will act in concert with the other forces in the approach to the Ambrosial Arbor through the Alchemy Commission Delve. Under... my control? You've been eager to discover for yourself what it is to be a general, have you not? You've never given me the opportunity, and now suddenly... <clears throat> Understood. As you wish. As for our astral friends, I hereby formally welcome you all to join our operation to seal the Stellaron. Lady Fu will deploy the Cloud Knights, but I would like you to set off in advance. Take a shortcut through the Artisanship Commission, and convene with Lady Fu further down the line. Understood. Understood. Worry not. I know how to repay a favor. A Sienjo has met with a dramatic chain of events, and each of you has chosen to stand by us. Your fearlessness moves me. Nevertheless, the enemy is upon us and time is of the essence. Let us not allow monetary affairs to cast a shadow over more pressing matters. Once catastrophe has been averted, we shall discuss this in greater detail. Miss Tingyun, I would like you to continue to serve as a guide for our astral friends. Oh, of course, General. I am duty-bound. A step forward bridges no distance hence. Ah, uh, the hexagram was right. The Ambrosial Arbor was felled thousands of years ago. Now it returns to life. The future of the Sienjo is difficult to define. I had long anticipated it. Huh? She's not angry? Uh, is there anyone that isn't two steps ahead of us around here? Pursuing Kafka is a waste of time and effort. The Matrix of Prescience informed me of her innocence. Our priority is the Ambrosial Arbor. From the time the Stellaron corrosion began to spread until now, the only reports we've received on the Alchemy Commission have come from alchemists and doctors stationed in other delves. The Alchemy Commission is where the Sienjo's medical research and production take place. However, due to its proximity to the Ambrosial Arbor's seal, I'm afraid the Stellaron Spears may have plunged it into a deeper crisis than we first feared. To make matters worse, the General suspects there are traitors in the Alchemy Commission. The self-proclaimed disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been plotting this for a long time. And now they're using the location to their advantage. I must take action as soon as possible. He really is a delegator at heart, isn't he? There isn't much distance between the artisanship and alchemy commissions. I'm afraid the former is likely also facing imminent catastrophe. The Star Skiff is ready. I will lead the way. I still have important tasks from the General to attend to. Go carefully, all of you. Uh, wait, wait! Master Diviner! Can you... divine our fortunes for us? Is there anything we need to watch out for? No need. My Omnisha has seen that your journey will be auspicious. Everything will proceed smoothly. Uh, are you sure? You don't need to use a crazy device or do more finger counting? Well said. Thank you for your assurance, Master Diviner. Onward! Huh? Look at all the people gathered here. <sighs> Not a good day for commuting on the Lafu. The Artisanship Commission Delve should have suspended operations after the Stellaron Corrosion began. 
Why haven't these people taken Star's gifts to safety? Maybe the Artisanship Commission are just more dedicated to their work? The Divination Commission's diviners aren't exactly a hard act to follow. <sighs> At the end of the day, work is work. You need it to live. You know, March, adults forget what relaxation means after a certain age. <laughs> Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Just speaking from the heart, that's all. I think they call that complaining from the heart. Are any of the paths in this world easy to tread? The Artisanship Commission is full of workshops, building state-of-the-art mechanisms, and craftsmen designing brand new concepts. Periodically stirring up trouble is part of their tradition. Entire buildings vanishing into thin air, puppet riots, you get the picture. It seems like the craftsmen are too afraid to go in, but they have nowhere to run to either. We should take care, benefactors. Something terrible must have happened. Either way, we'll have to go in. Let's ask around first. <sighs> Another locked gate. Time for the old dilemma. Break in or climb over. A warm reminder, benefactors, that the Artisanship Commission is as important to the Sienjo as the Divination Commission. Our law states that trespassing into the Artisanship Commission can result in a prison sentence of between 300 to 500 years. Serious violations may result in exile on a barren planet thousands of light years away. you gonna be this enthusiastic when it's jail sentencing time? I'm not trying to scare you. I'm simply suggesting you ask the craftsmen to see if they can provide an insider like Ching Chu to guide you. It seems more than a little reckless to charge in when we don't know what's ahead of us. Master Gong Shu. Oh, are you guys Cloud Knights? Are you here to save us? Your clothes? <sighs> I knew I was getting ahead of myself. You're just tourists. Sorry this crisis came during your trip. I'm sorry it came at all. Yeah, you just need to tell us what the trouble is. <laughs> General Jing Yuan pulled out all the stops to get us here. You can trust us. You mean the general invited you? Is that a joke? The Lafu has the Cloud Knights. Why would he send outsiders? There's been a serious incident in the Artisanship Commission. Nobody's in the mood for jokes, miss. You misunderstand, young sir. We genuinely want to help. Can you tell us what happened here? Waiting around, that's what. We ran away. It was way too dangerous in there. Please, if you plan on living a little longer, don't go in there. There's been some kind of botanical disaster. It was like an ornamental tree somewhere suddenly started to grow. There were branches so thick you couldn't put your arms around them. It spread everywhere. The whole commission is being destroyed. I don't get it. The Artisanship Commission focuses on the mechanical. We've got nothing to do with hydroponics or accelerated growth. Where did that thing come from? The worst thing is, my master is still inside. Master Gong Shu is the most experienced craftsman in the Artisanship Commission smelting works. He's in charge of our research project. When the incident happened, he dragged me, Ziming, and Yuncha to safety. 
But then he turned around and ran back in. I need to wait here for the Cloud Knight so I can tell them to rescue him. Why did he run back in? We didn't have time. We were scrambling for our lives. If I had an extra pair of arms, maybe I could have tried. I just heard him shout, It's gone! We lost the furnace! By the time we realized, he had already vanished. Anyway, you said you're here to help us, right? 100%. The General sent us. You don't have to believe us. The Astral Express doesn't shout about its achievements. We'll look for your master. In that case, take this Jade Seal with you. If you find my master, please bring him out safe and sound, if anything happens to him. Don't worry, young sir. Your master's safety is our... None of us would be able to graduate this year. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, let's go. I think this conversation's run its course. Botanical disaster? It must be the Ambrosial Arbor. But what about the furnace his master mentioned? The Stellaron facilitated the resurrection of the Ambrosial Arbor. The severity of the corrosion becomes worse as it grows. <sighs> Look, the roots are coming up through the ground. I'm afraid we've got some gardening work to do. Upon commission grounds, your feet do tread. Leave from whence you came, or soon be dead. Dead! Stay away! If you come any further, I'll not spare you. Uh, uh, hold on! No, Let us explain! We're not... What excuses do you have? Surprise me! Just passing Surrender. by. Stumbled in, door wide open. Hmm. Within commission grounds today was sown. An evil spun by hands unseen, unknown. No longer. If the security mechanisms didn't teach you a lesson, these robots will. Golden Cloud Toad, Illumination Dragonfish. Are you all right? Wake up. I raise you like my own flesh and blood. <laughs> Did you really have to destroy my little friends? I want compensation. You didn't want to listen to us. We were here to rescue you and you started a fight for no reason. Uh. How do you know my name, child? Does the reputation of Gong Shu Liang, the smelter extraordinaire, proceed one? <sighs> this guy's pretty deluded for a master. We're passing through on our way to the Alchemy Commission at the behest of General Jing Yuan and Diviner Fu. We'd like you to show us the way, Master Gong Shu. Really? The General sent you? Then this must be a mere misunderstanding. <laughs> uh, don't worry about those things. Easy to fix. But there's not much I can do to help. The Artisanship Commission was suddenly taken over by some evil tree demon. It seized our most precious possession. The Creation Furnace. It's a dark and powerful entity. The robots was like they gained consciousness. They were moving in a circle around it. I fear approaching it is tantamount to suicide. But then, I couldn't just run away, knowing what lies sealed in the furnace. Ha ha ha! 
I'm sure General Jing Yuan must have believed wholeheartedly that you could save the Artisanship Commission from this crisis. Means I know of may yet serve your fight. Pray you in repayment aid my plight. <laughs> come, come on, <laughs> through here. Look, this is one of the Artisanship Commission's prototypes. The shifting screen. <laughs> Good thing I got the students to take it out and make a few adjustments. Otherwise, they'd never have managed to get out in time. You all saw the Jade Gate on your way in, I assume. The shifting screen works in the same way. It connects two spatial coordinates in ways that laymen <laughs> wouldn't understand. Indeed, with limited range and energy costs aside, to every star skiff soon shall woe be tied. You sure about that? Even our trailblazing space anchors sound better. Thank goodness you take the time to perfect these inventions, Master. If not, the Skyfaring Commission would have become quite redundant by now. Ordinarily, I could have used this beauty to teleport you thither, but through earth and air, the wretched branches boiled, the shifting screen entangled thence, and coiled. some faith in me. The commission is more than a match for Mother Nature. <laughs> oh, piteous tree, who think thyself so strong, your match and more in strength to meet ere long. This is the first thing that came to mind when the tree demon attacked. It's a mechanical device codenamed the Illumination Chest. I invented this weapon for the Cloud Knights. It's incredibly powerful, but... Uh... Let me guess. Limited range? Energy costs? Yeah. Every light has its shadow. But this is more than enough to deal with the Tree Demon. And then... Ignite! Fire beats wood! There's no way we can lose! Very good! The Master reveals the door, but the Apprentice must walk through it! You're much better than my useless students! Oh, 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 what's happening? Is the delve collapsing? Oh. Oh. Seems like it worked. That tree demon must be writhing in pain. <laughs> All right, there's no time to lose. Hurry through the shifting screen to the opposite side before the branches grow back. Look, the Ambrosial Arbor's roots. Oh, they've uncoiled the Artisanship Commission's most precious invention, the Creation Furnace. Help me, dear young friends. Let's hack them away together. We can't let the roots punch through the furnace. Careful. It's changing. Whoa. What kind of 
kind of monster is this? Miraculous! It creates life at will! Such incredible power! Move carefully. Guarding the Ambrosio Arbor's roots and the furnace. Everything is ordained by the stars. Oh, stars, give these trailblazers your blessing. No interest in conflict. I'm on guard. Who will it be? Lance ablaze! Lance! Forward! <laughs> Fighting is meaningless. Lance at the ready. Watch this awesome move! No matter how much damage we do, it just heals itself! Not fair! We'll have to retreat for now. Follow me! The Siencho is so scared of the abominations of abundance. They're unstoppable. Miss Ting Yun, are the long life species on the Siencho all like this? I'm afraid this Ebon Deer was likely birthed by the Ambrosial Arbor as its guardian. It shares a close connection with the Arbor's roots. Most living creatures on the Siencho don't have abilities like this. Huh? As long as it's there, we can't get any closer. I wonder... The Ebon Deer seems to heal itself instantly, but perhaps it's drawing that power from elsewhere. <gasps> yeah! It can't heal if we take out the source, right? The monster only seems to be active in the vicinity of the arbor. Let's look around and see if we can find anything. So the general asked you to head to the Alchemy Commission, mm hmm? <sighs> the Artisanship Commission had no choice but to halt operations once the Tree Demon appeared. Young friends, I have a suggestion. Why don't we... Any thoughts, Master Gongshu? Hmm... When the deer revives, the surrounding roots glow brightly. Oh, great observation, Mr. Gongshu. It's amazing what you notice when you're not fighting. <laughs> I'm only an artisan, after all. My skills in Clash of Swords shall find no sake. Yet, that which clasheth needeth hands to make. As Mr. Yang said, the deer monster is likely drawing power from somewhere in order to replenish itself. I'm certain that when the arbor glows, we are witnessing that very process. Precisely. You remember how we untangled the shifting screen with fire? Well, you're right. Those roots never grew back. 
Not only that, its reaction suggested we'd hurt it. Perhaps that's our starting point. Take hold of your weapons, young comrades. Let's raise these roots to the ground! See? My theory was correct! Keep going! Quick! There's more roots over here! Give me a moment. I'll set up the device. <sighs> I guess we're done. I suspect the Ambrosial Arbor's root system must have spread far underground. The only thing we can say with confidence is that we removed the majority of those within the bounds of the Artisanship Commission. Let's hurry, before they have a chance to grow back. So, the next step is... Oh, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. Look! The roots coiled around the creation furnace! They've withered! Excellent! Nothing can stop you now! Stay alert! My turn! I have something for you. You can't run! Try that again! <laughs> Time for an overhaul. Still don't understand. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. I'm on guard. You won't get away. Told you I could fight. for you. don't understand. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Half luck running into me! <laughs> Phew! Let me tend your wounds! Spider-Man! Much 
obliged. Sometimes watch this awesome move. I'm on guard. <laughs> you won't get away. You can't run. <laughs> Here, need a doctor? Stay off. Oh, thanks a lot. Good. For you. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. You won't get away. Blaze. Lance! Forward! Lance at the ready. Don't under humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception.
Bring the ship what's in your prescription! Much obliged. Overhaul. You won't get away. It's getting quick. Finish it off. Perhaps you still don't understand. You never can see as its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Let me tend your wounds. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! On guard. I have something for you. Tough luck running into me. Gotta try hard sometimes. Watch this awesome move. General Jing Yuan said the Ambrosial Arbor was an unfathomable celestial blessing. At first glance, that deer could have been an ordinary life form, but the ability to heal such grave wounds in an instant. I think I finally understand why the Xianzhou decided to follow the hunt in eradicating the abundance. If Immortal creations were left to spread their branches and roots throughout the universe. Entire ecosystems would collapse. No wonder the people of the Xianzhou wander the universe, never settling on a planet. You are a man of vision, Mr. Yang. It's a shame our ancestors, the Elixir Seekers, were unable to see that hidden curse 8,000 years ago. Perhaps some of them did reject the Plague Author's gift. But how could an entire civilization resist the temptation of immortality? <sighs> Ironic, isn't it? The wise are buried while the fools remain immortal. The Sienjo regrets being led astray by the abundance. That's why they have decided to embark on the path of the hunt. Maybe it's not too late for redemption. Thank you for your help. I realize you must continue on to the Alchemy Commission, to the Ambrosial Arbor. After witnessing what happened here, I know there will only be more danger ahead. Go, friends, and stay vigilant. I wish you a safe journey.
Jedi, you're back. From the sound of your stride, I sense you're in good spirits. I wouldn't be envious. This is not an innate ability, merely compensation for my visual impairment. Ultimately, nothing I hear or smell can match the vividness of the colors that you perceive. Let's get down to business. I analyzed the prescription you procured, the draft of Draconic Surge. Now that I have a preliminary conclusion, it needs to be delivered to the seat of Divine Foresight. The conclusion... Put simply, I don't believe that the draft of Draconic Surge holds the cure to the Mara. Even in the foreseeable future, there will likely not be any such cure. I've compiled the details into a written analysis. If you're interested, feel free to take a look. This is a copy of pharmacological studies on the draft of Draconic Surge. If the Chief Counselor wants to see it urgently, I'll have to ask you to deliver it for me. You're back. Anything you wanted to share? Wow. Even for those alchemists, that was fast. Don Shu. W wait, why would the Alchemy Commission's chief alchemist be away from her post? I've heard that the chief alchemist is visually impaired. She rarely leaves the Alchemy Commission delve. She has a vast knowledge and expertise. No wonder she was able to analyze the pharmacology so quickly. Let me see her report. No cure? <sighs> Where did these villains get their hands on such a complex prescription? This is infuriating. Still, this is a clue we can follow. Thank you. Please accept these gifts for your efforts. Please, take them. You've done so much for the Lafu, for the Sienjo. This is the least I could do. Thank you for coming on such short notice. My stay in Exalting Sanctum was supposed to be focused on treating people and delivering medicine. But the Seat of Divine Foresight tasked me with analyzing the prescription. I've been severely delayed. I've already concocted some of the medicine in question, but there can't be any further delays. Could you assist me in ensuring it arrives on time? Thank you. If she's gotten into any trouble, be sure to let me know when you get back. This is the medicine. Her house is near the Court of Tranquility. It shouldn't be hard to find her. Is this the one Don Shu sent me to find? Does she come here to treat other sightless people? Outworlder, mind your own business. Who do you think you are? Keep your nose out of this. I beat people up all the time. Yeah, get lost. Stop meddling in our business. Power! I saw it! You're a cheater! 
That's right. If you hadn't cheated, I would have knocked your lights out. You sure about that, boss? They didn't even flinch. Ugh, shut up! Boss, let's get out of here. We shouldn't fight anyone that doesn't respect martial arts. <laughs> I'll let you off the hook this time. Next time we fight fair and square. Yeah! Thank you for helping me, mister. I'm... okay. It's my fault. I shouldn't have wandered off on my own. Then I wouldn't have run into those guys. They always laugh at me for being blind. They like to trip me up and steal my things. <laughs> Thank goodness you were here. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let me off so easily. Oh, Don Shu asked you to come? Things are bad on Olafu recently. Don Shu must be very busy. Thank you, mister. Remember to thank her for me. Why does she wander about alone? Well, I've delivered the medicine. I should report back to Don Shu. How was she? Did you deliver the medicine? She reminds me of myself when I was a child. I also had to find my way in the dark. Face obstacles I couldn't predict. As well as deal with unconscious prejudices people had against me. If I was ever injured by bullies or after a fall, I'd run crying to the healers at the Alchemy Commission and ask them to heal me. I suppose that's why I followed in their footsteps. To pay a little kindness forward. Thank you for looking after the child. Could I ask you for another favor, friend? Yes. I worry about her wandering around on her own. And I want to know what's been on her mind lately. Her parents passed away in the denizens of Abundance Wars. The relatives who took her in aren't close to her. And whenever I treat her, she often confides in me. A healer's medicine might remedy one's physical health, but sometimes the loneliness and hurt inside one's heart needs companionship and care to heal. She told me that whenever she's feeling troubled, she finds a quiet corner in the Artisanship Commission and just sits there letting the sounds wash over her. Her parents used to be artisans in the commission, so I think she has some nostalgic connection to the place. In all likelihood, that's where she'll be. <sighs> There's danger around every corner these days, especially for a sightless child. Let's go. What's happening? Is the girl in trouble? Okay now, shall you? <laughs> Thank you, big brother. <laughs> Thank you, Anshu. You don't need to be scared anymore. He is here. But I... When I think about all the trouble I've caused you to... I feel like such a burden. I'm sorry. Is that why you're crying? Maybe 
You should start getting used to this feeling. Because... In the next few centuries, visually impaired people like us will continue to require help from everyone we meet. So... If a little bit of guilt like this is enough to break your heart, then how will you manage such an arduous path? I'm not trying to console her. This is... the reality. Walking alone in the darkness, fearing every incoming, invisible obstacle, unable to understand other people's descriptions. Everyone, everything, is like a hot coal in the dark. Invisible yet still able to burn you. As a long-life species, she can expect life to continue like this for nearly a thousand years. She must learn to depend upon herself rather than just foolishly waiting around for the next hero to swoop in and save her. Yes by trying my best to change her personal circumstances. In the meantime, she'll have to learn to withstand the darkness, just as I have. Hey, you're right, aren't you? <laughs> From now on, I'll do my best to rely on myself. Good. I hope you remember this forever. This place is too dangerous. Let's head back to Exalting Sanctum. Thank you again. For all you've done. It would seem we incomplete ones are often bullied from a tender age. I endured in numerous hardships to become Chief Alchemist. Yet, there are still things that leave me feeling helpless. That's the reason I said what I said. You might mistake my words for being hurtful. But the truth is, no amount of words can prepare her for what lies ahead. For long life species, these things are permanent. Whether we are beautiful or ugly, Tall or short, wise or foolish, all of it is encoded into our flesh from the moment we are born. The impairments of short life species can be corrected with ingenia or surgery, but that's an impossibility for Sienjo natives. No matter the method employed, our bodies will eventually return to their original states. I too was once a non-believer. I fooled myself into acquiring artificial eye implants. Soon thereafter, my sightless eyes began to regenerate, and I was left in pain and despair. That brief window of sight that I regained has turned into a perpetual source of anguish, forever etched into my mind. For long life species, this incompleteness is a permanent, unavoidable tenance. <laughs> what a joke. Even the denizens of abundance, so called abominations, needn't endure such torture. Perhaps we incomplete ones are merely traitors, cursed by the plague's author. Nothing. Forget I said anything. Thank you for sticking with me through all of this. I think my aspirations in Exalting Sanctum have been met. For now. Oh. I have a gift for you. Though I'll need a little time to prepare it. I'll contact you once it's ready to collect. See you soon, friend. Don Shu needs more time to prepare my gift. There's nothing pressing right now. 
Why not head over to Spare Time Bookshop for a while? that making bookworms feel at home is more important than getting them to buy something. All we ask is that you find a quiet spot away from the browsing areas. you are, friend. You've been running so many errands lately. I'd like for you to take some useful items away with you. Examining the exhibits in the Seat of Divine Foresight inspired me to create this. I referenced some historical texts and concocted a medicine that can extend your lifespan and improve your health. I call it the Broomdew Concentrate Pellet, and I'd like you to have it. Consuming it will make your body light, agile, and promote longevity and well-being. As a nameless, it'll make your journey a much less arduous one. Well then, that's that. I've still got some other business to attend to, so... Shall we say goodbye for now? Perhaps the next time we meet, I'll be able to see you in the true sense of the word. Tastes a bit strange, but no adverse reactions so far. Uh, wait a minute. Ugh, my head. What's happening? Something's wrong. I'm burning up. Feels like I can't breathe. <sighs> Seems to be calming down a bit but still uncomfortable. This doesn't seem right. I'd better talk to Ching Zhu at the Seat of Divine Foresight. Ugh. There goes my head again. Is Don Shu sure this broomdew is safe for consumption? What's happening? Isn't this the Seat of Divine Foresight? Why are there so many Mara struck here? No, I can't let them get near me. Uh, what happened to you? Careful, don't hurt him. Hey, wake up. Are you okay? Thank the stars. You're finally awake. I thought we might lose you. I was so worried. You came into the Seat of Divine Foresight and started brandishing your weapon. It looked like you'd lost control. As if you'd been stricken with Mara. There has to be something awry. Tell me what happened to you before arriving at the Seat of Divine Foresight. From what you're saying, it seems like the gift she gave to you must be related to the Disciple's prescription we examined earlier. But the healer who examined you just now said your body doesn't seem to have been affected. <sighs> How strange. Could Don Shu be playing a trick on you? Or is her medicine somehow not working as planned? <sighs> My advice is to come back later for another examination. It's a Disciples of Sanctus Medicus prescription, after all. Who knows what healing effects it may have. I'll put out a wanted notice for Don Shu immediately. If you find any trace of her, get in touch with me. Take this Deeting with you. It might just help you find this 
friend. I came up from Starskiff Haven. Don Shu isn't here. Where could she be? I've got it. Don Shu's medicine box has her scent on it. I'll ask the D-Ting that Qingzu lent me to track her. Time to come out, little D-Ting. I need you to help me find Don Shu. That's Don Shu. With a group of disciples? I guess that tells me all I need to know. Master, stand back. Let me handle this. Stand down. He's a friend. Many of our brethren have fallen by his hands. Yes, I am aware. But... I said he's my friend. Leave us. Yes, Master. I didn't expect you to come looking for me. So they do. I... I am master of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, scion of Merciful Medicus, and I shall lead the entire Sienjo Alliance onto the path of abundance. Did you ingest the Broomdew Concentrate pellet I gave you? Did you feel the shift? So many elixir seekers arrive on the Sienjo in the hope of obtaining the formula to immortality. But none have succeeded. Their aspirations are well founded. The Sienjo does indeed harbor the secret to becoming immortal. I admire you. So, I thought I'd give you the chance to obtain it. Upon ingesting the Broomdew Concentrate Pellet, you will feel the limitless freedom of the form bestowed upon you by Merciful Medicus. And yet, you don't sound any different. Your breaths are not prolonged, and your presence doesn't feel like it's been altered in any way. Why is that? Is your constitution somehow different from the average person? A Stellaron? That's impossible. Even if what you say is true. To host a Stellaron as a short life species would only spell an early demise. It looks like you are not fated to live a long life. Friend, please. I urge you to leave the Lafu. Abandon this struggle. The truth isn't what it appears to be. What did the minions at the seat of divine foresight tell you about this conflict? That the Rainbow Arbiter is the emissary of the righteous? That the Arbiter is chasing the heathen plague's author across the stars, while the disciples of Sanctus Medicus abet their heresy? Do you really think that is the case? You don't understand Merciful Medicus, nor the devilish archer author, but you understand me. Do you see me as such? A heretic? I do not ask for you to pick a side. I just wish for you to leave the Lafu. To leave this all behind. This isn't your fight, and I do not wish to make an enemy of you. Most unfortunate. Had you known me first, perhaps we could have been good friends. Master, we should leave now. I sincerely wish that this will be our last meeting. Farewell, Nameless. I 
You'd better report my findings to Qingzu at the Seat of Divine Foresight. How did it go? Did you manage to locate Don Shu? So you weren't able to apprehend her. I see. These people have been in hiding for so long. They must have a more nefarious plan. I've got to apprehend them quickly. Once again, thank you for all your help. With your intel, we will put a stop to Don Shu. Jing Yuan tells me you'll be joining the forces led by the Alchemy Commission and Master Diviner. I won't take up any more of your time. Please, take good care of yourself. If you run into Don Shu again, contact the nearest Cloud Knights. Take this as a token of my appreciation. You deserve it. here was intense. The Master Diviner must have launched the campaign while we were delayed in the Artisanship Commission. Indeed. Since General Jing Yuan tasked the Master Diviner with commanding the Cloud Knights, he must have known she'd act on the results of her divination. Thank goodness the General didn't make us go with the Knights. Fighting is totally different from adventuring. All these people... It's tough to bear. I'm afraid this is nothing, Benefactor. Centuries ago, an Emanator of Abundance besieged the Lafu with the aim of taking the Ambrosial Arbor. They destroyed half our Delves and killed most of the Cloud Knights. For long-life species, such events are more like yesterday's memories than ancient history. This awful spectacle is child's play in comparison. Hey, is that supposed to make us feel better? It's hard to tell if the Master Diviner won or lost here. A draw? This isn't a tournament, you know. I can't see many Cloud Knights. The Sienjo must have fought well. Not necessarily. There'd usually be a base with supporting forces set up after a successful engagement, but we don't see any of that. Let's look around and see if we can find some clues. Be careful! Those monsters are- Look! There's someone over there! Here! There are still survivors here! <clears throat> You're not the knights. What is your purpose here? It's dangerous. We're reinforcements sent by the general. Where's everyone else? <laughs> Resorting to short life species as reinforcements. <laughs> Jing Yuan is truly running out of options. <laughs> Run! She's a disciple of Sanctus Medicus! Silence! If my healing worked, you'll become one of us. And then it's not just me they'll be running from. Hurry! Leave here! I can't control myself anymore! The lives of short life species are so fleeting and brief. Why seek death? Why did you come to the Sienjo? To seek immortality? You don't have to appease Jing Yuan. 
The disciples of Sanctus Medicus can provide all that you desire. Uh, hold on. We'll find someone to help. Don't waste your time. They've converted me. I don't have much longer. Go! The Master Diviner's troops are ahead. Let's go. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus were in hiding for so long. Now they finally show their face. Did the Master Diviner fail to foresee this? Be careful, benefactors. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus worship Yaoshi, the Plague's author, the greatest enemy of the Xianzhou. The Alliance has been trying to root out their secret organization for millennia. It's no coincidence that they've chosen this moment to reveal themselves. Who goes there? Show yourselves! Wait, it's you. Quickly, in here! It's dangerous outside. You recognize us? Are you not the General's guests? The Master Diviner prophesied your arrival. We were ordered to wait for you under any circumstances. Yes, the Master Diviner ordered us to remain stationed here and went to scout ahead. They're saying the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have returned. They haven't been seen for an age. The troops are anxious. It's good that you're here. The Master Diviner said the Knights weren't to move out until you arrived. Please wait in the camp. We'll decide on our next steps once the Master Diviner returns. That the Cloud Knights received orders not to advance is a bad sign. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. I have heard the name before. If memory serves, they're an underground sect of the Abundance that's said to have lain dormant within the Sienjo, plotting to overthrow the Alliance. The Stellaron has certainly caused Abundance-like abnormalities, is that what motivated the Disciples to come out of the Shadows? No. The Knight's main force remains intact. Something must have happened. Something we're not aware of. The Master Diviner isn't here. Let's head into camp and see what we can learn from the troops here. Good idea. Why don't you take a look around, Benefactors? My feet need a rest. You want to ask questions? Uh, uh, fine. But I must be present the whole way through. This part needs to be recorded as testimony. <laughs> Finally, someone to talk to. These Cloud Knights are so serious, so boring. <laughs> that shining seed? <laughs> I've seen it. So beautiful. If you gaze into it, there's a voice inside that speaks to you. Do you still remember Kakolia? Um... <laughs> the Master said we could inject new life into the Ambrosial Arbor with it. <laughs> I didn't believe it at first. We tried many methods, spending multiple lifetimes of short life species. Yet the Arbor showed no signs of resurrection. But look upon it now. <laughs> Only the power of an eon can recreate the miracle. Yes, yes, the mighty Sanctus Medicus, the Abundance. So you witnessed it too? The Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. <laughs> Magnificent. In the Befall era, so far in the past that even long-life species cannot recall, Sanctus Medicus the Abundance gifted the Ambrosial Arbor to the Sienjo Lofu. With that sacred tree, humanity realized many miracles. The fallow earth, the western soapberry, the altered flesh. But that devilish archer ruined everything. 
They twisted right and wrong and erased Sanctus Medicus' achievements. But soon, soon we will return to the glory of the Befall Era. <laughs> You've seen the fantastic creatures that fought with us. They are only minor gifts of the Ambrosial Arbor. Shut it, rambling rodent. The Cloud Knights will root all of you out soon. What did we do? We cured our kin. <laughs> it must hurt to be trapped in such weak flesh and blood. You scum! If the order allowed, I would cut you down now. Oh, you don't understand. A short life species couldn't understand. Mara struck? Bah! It's a second life gifted by Sanctus Medicus. To eliminate the self, to achieve transcendence, a life of true freedom. I see a desire for power in your eyes. This life is too short for you, isn't it? <laughs> I can... I can help you. Don't listen. His words are poison. We're just having fun, sir. <laughs> Without the blessing of the Abundance, you short-life species would never be able to endure the transformation. <sighs> Forgive me for being brief. Warfare is a dangerous business. There's no time for idle chat. We took over this place a few hours ago under the Master Diviner's command. It was only afterwards that we learned our enemies were none other than the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, those who worshipped the Plague's author. Everything was going as planned. The sorcerers of the disciples and the fantastic creatures they commanded were no match for us. And after a while, our comrades suddenly started to slaughter one another. Thanks for your intel. I'll dispatch someone immediately. The greatest fear of the Sienjo people is succumbing to our Mara-struck form around others. To do so means that we have given up on being human, lost the abomination sleeping in our immortal blood, and violated the Rainbow's admonishments. What the disciples of Sanctus Medicus did are despicable acts that every Alliance resident detests. I swear to the Arbiter that I will avenge my comrades. Master Diviner, you're back. I have kept you waiting, but the deceit of the Disciples is laid bare to me now. I was merely being courteous. According to my divination, you've hardly been here long. The conflict is difficult, Master Diviner, but you have led your forces from the front lines and beyond in pursuit of the enemy. Admirable work. Hardly. A Diviner must acquire first-hand knowledge in order to calculate the future. Collecting intelligence in this way assists me in achieving the right answer. Wait. What's all this about a difficult conflict? The disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been scheming for a long time, but our army is in no way inferior. How can things be so difficult? It would seem you came prepared. The first time we met Madame Yukong, she said something like, This is a Sienjo affair, and there's no need for the Express to get involved. And now, here we are, running around doing everything. Even the IPC takes it easier on us. Oh, let me guess, what are we up to this time? Could it be heading to the front lines? Leading the Cloud Knight charge? Well, try this on for size. Nope! I can't stand any more of this fighting, so there! 
Who said you'd be heading to the battlefield? Uh, we're not? Jingyuan's orders. He said that the value of unexpected guests lies in the unexpected. The Cloud Knight's assault was to demonstrate our power to the enemy head-on. Now it is time for the unexpected. Please, come with me. After receiving the Ambrosial Arbor, the Alchemy Commission was once the Lafu's most vital commission. After all, it was they who changed the Sienjo natives into long-life species. The but in the end, the alchemists grew discontented and began to obsess over the manipulation of life. Research into the arbor poisoned their minds. The more they pursued it. Morning bells chime in a dream. Evening mist gathers around me. Do you see that? What huge elixir crucibles. There's still smoke coming out of them. This is where the alchemists practiced the way of immortality in ancient times. They erected elixir crucibles here to absorb the power of the arbor, turning fantasy into reality. Since the smoke from the crucibles never ceases, this place was named Evenest Mansion. An elegant name, but as far as the art of war is concerned, it's a death trap. As long as the crucibles are lit and the smoke continues to linger, we cannot get any closer. This is why the Cloud Knights lost control and became Mara struck? Indeed. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus infuse the smoke that permeates this delve with medicinal pellets that elicit Mara. Unless the Cloud Knights were able to march with their breath held, they would be doomed to fall into disarray. Moreover, no one can know whether their comrade was about to be stricken with Mara. Is there anything better than fear for destroying the morale of an army? The Cloud Knight's first assault was just a cover. You're using the main army to attract the enemy's attention, while we douse the elixir crucibles and stop the smoke. The disciples of Sanctus Medicus renounced their century of secrecy and chose to reveal themselves meaning they feel confident of victory. But no matter how well prepared they may be, their focus has always been the Cloud Knights. They are completely unaware of your existence and capacity, and in short, cannot be prepared against you. You misunderstand the nature of the Marastruck condition. It is not a curse unique to humankind. Foxians don't usually succumb to it because their lifespan is not eternal. Yet they are still a long-life species. The Vidyatara rely on molting to discard the old world. All long-life species are equal in the face of Mara. However, the disciples of Sanctus Medicus could never have guessed that the General would seek outside help. They won't be prepared against short-life species. Is this what General Jing Yuan meant by unexpected guests? I wouldn't hazard a guess. All I can say is that the predictions of the Stellaron Hunters were more accurate than mine. The future that Kafka seeks is becoming reality. One step at a time. I do not wish to be their puppet either. In any case, we do not walk alone and unhindered on our paths. Our choices define us and influence others. The duty of the Master Diviner is to bring luck and avoid misfortune. I don't want my choice to plunge the Lafu into a terrible future. To return to the matter at hand, only you can douse the Elixir Crucibles without being harmed by them. What say you? Fine. I didn't hear a please, but seeing as we do kind of have superpowers around here... Mr. Yang, what do you think? I will come at once when the smoke dissipates.
You won't be left to fend for yourselves. Huh. I feel like even though long-life species get to live forever... They aren't so different from us short-life species when it comes to worries and suffering. Wait, Miss Ting Yoon! Why are you still here? You're too close to the Crucible! Thank you for the concern, but I'm fine. The General commanded me to stay with you. I dare not go against military orders. Your life is more important, Miss Ting Yoon. Go back. We can explain to the General. <laughs> There's really no need. I've spent my years traveling the universe. Not to mention, I'm younger and stronger than I look. Even you benefactors have probably lived longer than me. Yay! We did it! Ugh, can't see the smoke anymore! <sighs> Excellent! I'll lead my troops to the rendezvous. Firewood. So, you succeeded in dowsing the elixir cauldrons. Unimportant. The inevitable is already upon us. Don Shu. It's you. I have met you before in my capacity as Chief Alchemist, Master Diviner. You don't seem surprised. Indeed. The General and I knew that the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus must be hiding in the Alchemy Commission. However, without evidence, we couldn't bring charges before the Commissions. We had to wait for you to show yourselves. And now, your charges are many. Drawing Stellaron spirits into the Sienjo, Resurrecting the Ambrosial Arbor. Striking down our people with Mara. The Ten Lords Commission will address these transgressions during your reckoning. Crimes? If I am guilty, then all of our Sienjo ancestors are also guilty. They were the ones who accepted the blessings of the Abundance and turned their descendants into long-life species. The Disciples of Sanctus Medicus are only walking on the road our ancestors once took. How is it a crime to seek ascendance? In days of old, the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor enveloped the Sienjo Lafu like a living creature. We controlled the Stellar Seas, and none could stand in our way. Everyone could become celestial and shift form at will. Divine miracles descended onto all nine Sanjo ships. What a glorious time that was. How far the Sanjo has fallen. We consent to be commanded by the devilish archer. Suffer continuously at the hands of the denizens of abundance. And the Ten Lords Commission even forces us to give up our immortality. How pitiful. I do not blame you for your ignorance. We were not born in the era when the Ambrosial Arbor first descended. Nor did we witness its miracles. But now, we now have an opportunity to restore the ancient laws. Forgive me for thinking you might have harbored some profound enlightenment. Yours is the same old talk of those who seek power and give up on their humanity. Our Sien Zhou ancestors fought side by side with the Arbiter, laid waste to the Arbor, and established the Ten Lords Commission to lay down the lines between life and death. In doing so, we enshrined our future as human beings. Celestials? There are no Celestials on the Sien Zhou. The divine miracles of the Abundance, the manipulation of life and death. Your deeds are nothing but evil. I have nothing to say to you, Master Diviner. You have already made your decision. 
You have discarded power. A most foolish choice. Master Diviner, allow me to show you what the Celestials were capable of. Follow my charge. of Sanctus Medicus have fulfilled our promise. You, Lord Ravager, must do the same. Now, quickly! Little pawn, must you force me to intervene directly? I'm loath to flout my philosophy of destruction. <laughs> Never mind. It would seem the time has come for other means of dismantling the Xianzhou from within. <sighs> what a shame. Uh, it would have been nice to observe for a little longer. <laughs> you received the gift of abundance. Surely you can withstand the blessing. Introduce myself. I am Lord Ravager Fantilia. I have come with a single purpose to set in motion the self destruction of the Sienja. Miss King Yoon, is the Lord Ravager of the Anti Matter Legion? But uh, how can that be? I can breathe easy again. Keep calm, all of you. This is a formidable enemy. We have to stay together. You are fortunate that Zephlo and Selenova never set their gaze upon the CN. They have no qualms about dealing out destruction by the wrong hand. But since that stubborn general of yours has forced me to take center stage, I'll make sure I steal the show. <laughs> My apologies for leaving so soon, but I have an appointment to keep. I'm sure my friends here will be happy to entertain you. Wait, hold on a second. Are you really saying that Miss Ting Yoon was a member of the Antimatter Legion all along? And what was that fire that came out of her? And her body? Where did it go? Mr. Yang, you're smart. What happened just now? <sighs> the flame we witnessed claimed to be Lord Ravager Fantilia, a name I've heard other nameless speak of in the past. She's one of seven Lord Ravagers who serve Nanook and finds pleasure in witnessing the self-destruction of mortals. She's led countless souls down a dark and hopeless path. Meaning that Ting Yun had long since fallen under the Lord Ravager's influence? I don't believe so. Fantilia revels in watching a corrupted mind eating away its host from inside out until the obliteration of both is achieved. But there was no indication that Ting Yun had been misguided or manipulated. It's possible that the Ting Yun we knew wasn't her true self, 
but an image Vantilia devised to serve her own purposes. You're saying that the real Ting Yun is still... I'm sorry, March. I can't say with any certainty where the real Ting Yun may be, or at what point she was replaced by the imposter. Without knowing where the body vanished to, it'll be tough to get an answer. At this point, it's all just conjecture and hope. But if that body belonged to the real Ting Yun, it does raise the question of why Fantilia would go to such lengths to destroy any evidence of her. Wouldn't it be more in line with her destructive nature to leave Ting Yun's remains behind as a, a display of power? I believe this to be Fantilia's goal, to sow seeds of doubt among us and ensnare us in a malevolent trap. It's clear that the sudden resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus is all connected to the Lord Ravager. Pretending to be a San Joe citizen, planting a Stellaron in the Lafu, all part of her plan to bring about our self-destruction. Ventilia is aiming for the Ambrosial Arbor. If she succeeds, the Lofu will be deprived of its roots, making its destruction all too easy. We must stop her. We need to take a star skiff to scale Gorge Waterscape. The Ambrosial Arbor can be sealed from that self. Let's make haste. That imposter had the audacity to carry out her nefarious plans right under our noses. How utterly despicable. What worries me more is... just how many more antimatter saboteurs are at large. It all happened so suddenly. But looking back, I think Mr. Yang was right. Ting Yun was behaving strangely. She was fascinated with the Abundance's creations. Since she was an Amicaster dispatched by the Skyfaring Commission, it's evident that there must indeed be a person with her name in the Commission. We'll have to let the Cloud Knights get to the bottom of what happened to the real Ting Yun. As for the Ting Yun who accompanied us all that way, it's like what Mr. Yang said. Her appearance was designed to sow seeds of doubt among us. We cannot allow ourselves to fall into her trap. It is a delve governed by the Vidyatara, supposedly an ancient oceanic region transferred from the Vidyatara home planet. After the Ambrosial Arbor was broken in two during the war, its roots were left gnarled and broken. Yet it never died. The Alliance decided to seal the Arbor within Scale Gorge Waterscape, entrust it to the High Elders of the Vidyatara, and rely on the power of Long Scions to constrain it. It has been so long. No one knows whether the seal remains. Even if it does, I doubt it will hinder that spectral Lord Ravenger. I've reported the current situation to the Seat of Divine Foresight. He made no further contact after we communicated at the Matrix of Prescience. He said he had important matters to personally attend to. The situation stands on the edge of a precipice. We must trust in the General. with this place. <laughs> yep, it's the Alchemy Commission. No wonder we were getting those military broadcasts on the way over. Uh, something about the Cloud Knights gathering here, right? <laughs> They're probably coming to fix the Stellaron problem. <laughs> it's been such a long journey, but now we're finally gonna meet some Cloud Knights. I'll be back with my unit. <laughs> I didn't lie to you, right? I told you I'd bring you somewhere safe, and I did. Though, we did take a bit of a detour. Before I arrived in Starskiff Haven, I had a diviner read my fortune for the journey ahead. He told me not to be concerned with the destination, 
but to seize my chances and travel with the current to reap the greatest harvest. Meaning? Meaning, thank you, Miss Sushan. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna go report to the nearest captain. You guys can hang around here, but don't run off too far. There will be Cloud Knights coming to escort you back soon. Bye for now. The messages never get sent. I wonder what's happening with those three. The Cloud Knights seem to be gathering for the Stellaron disaster. But why did Kafka want us to come here? What happened to them? And what happened to Blade? I've delayed for too long. I need more information. I'm sorry, I have to catch up to my friends. Thank you for looking out for me on this journey. Both of you. What a huge cauldron. This Orient cauldron is driven by the cloud hymn magic of our people, the Vidyadara. It drinks the water of the ancient sea like a whale swallows the tide and refines it into medicinal pellets. should take this chance to learn more, young master. Uh-huh. But I don't need any sort of device to help me command water. What more is there to learn? You are indeed the chosen one, with endless potential. Yet, cloud him magic is just the beginning. Of Vidyadara and Miraja go? Have these shadows of the past yet to disperse? <sighs> these memories... No. They have nothing to do with me anymore. Searching power! It's you! You've returned, High Elder! I'm sorry. I cannot linger here. My friends have left. I must find them. You didn't heed us then, and won't heed us now. As headstrong as you always were. It seems you already made your decision. There is a vessel bound for Scale Gorge Waterscape located ahead. He's here. Hmm, right on time. That feeling, Kafka, it's welling up within me. That feeling, it, it's... Well, don't resist. Let the Mara strike you. You're here. 
<laughs> it's time to pay the price. It's time! You think changing form will help you escape? Escape. I've told you and that woman many times. I am Don Hung. I have nothing to do with your past. Don Hung. <laughs> you think another name and face can blot out the sin of your past? You. You didn't even experience death. I will force this suffering upon you, Don Hung. You will know the pain of death. <laughs> Not on my watch. You're not murdering anyone today, fugitive. You're coming with me. Jing Yuan's lapdog. <laughs> Did the general not teach you to choose your battles wisely? Hey, move back. Things are about to... Huh? You look so... familiar. <laughs> look out! <laughs> Quit hiding. <laughs> Your true <laughs> self revealed. Stop! <laughs> you... I have news for you, boy. Behind you is none other than the traitor of the Sienjo. A criminal forever banished. The High Elder of the Vidyadara. Imbibed our Lune. Stellaron hunters were the only ones to infiltrate the Sienjo. In that case, I'll bring both of you to justice! I've heard of you in Bibiter Lune. First it was the Stellaron hunters, now an exiled criminal has infiltrated the Sienjo! No interest in stoking conflict. I came to ensure the safety of my friends. Save your excuses for the Shackling Prison! <laughs> Out of the way! Do not be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Better, but I'm afraid you won't be seeing your friends. They're caught in their own bitter struggle. You're not getting away either! Is that so? <laughs> Let's heat things up then. Kafka? Lady, listen to me. Unleash the Mara. So it begins. are okay. Gotta make this quick. <laughs> Don't <open. Yeah. sighs> Fail to send you. You two just won't give up. I only have one choice. So forgiving. 
familiar. Did she teach you? Then you deserve no mercy. Can't delay any longer. I didn't wish to harm anyone. But there's no other way. Forgive me. You listen to me. Stop. Well, Blady, are you satisfied? Just clearing the stage for the grand entrance. Can't have you three misbehaving in front of the Lawfu's hotshot general. <laughs> Ching Yuan. Many years have passed since the two of you departed the Sienjo, and yet the circumstances of your return appear to be equally unhappy. If you still thought of me as a friend, you should have forewarned me. My task is complete. Hmm, that it is. Thank you for assisting the Sienjo in this small matter. Take this person away. I will pretend I didn't see anything this time. General, I... Now is not the time. It has been a long time, old friend. I'm not him. Hmm. I'm sorry. You cannot leave yet. Your Astral Express friends are waiting for you in Scale Gorge Waterscape. Shall we go and see them together? Lunarescent Depths. A realm of singular beauty. Skelgorge Waterscape is the same as when I last laid eyes on it. And here we stand so different from one another. The flesh of long life species may be immortal, but the constant of heaven and earth eludes them. You know the Vidyadara hatching rebirth cycle, General. The waters of the ancient sea have cleansed Dan Fang of his past sin. The person that once stood here alongside you is no more. I am Dan Hung. Whether Dan Fang was hero or villain has nothing to do with me. I bore his punishment, accepted my eternal banishment without complaint. But do not let his shadow cloud your estimation of me, General. <sighs> Raising old nets only darkens the water. An exercise in unhappiness. Perhaps it is your visage. The horns on your head, or the unmistakable air of the High Elder that makes the separation nigh impossible for me. I already told you, I... You did. But to what effect? If words alone were enough to change the heart, this world would be without quarrel. If you wish to rid me of the illusion of Don Fung, you must do something for me. 
Before I can let Don Fong die and revoke your banishment edict, I need him to do me one final favor. I can guarantee you that when it is done, you will no longer walk in anyone's shadow aboard the Law Fu. I may not be capable of the things that Don Fung was capable of. You must do it, or my promise will count for naught. If you wish to blame someone, blame your previous incarnation. Had he not committed that terrible sin, had the power of dragon transmutation been passed on intact, I would have no need to compel you. It is as I said. Here we stand so different from one another. Don Fung is no more. Now, there is only Don Hung. But I... I am the general of the Lo Fu. There are things that I wish I did not have to do, and yet I must. <laughs> Let us talk of happier tidings. The friends you made on the Express are here. Do you wish to see them? You, you brought them here? <laughs> yes. They are waiting in the Dragon Vista Rain Hall. Go. Your friends are waiting for you. I have been keeping careful watch against the abominations of abundance, the Stellaron hunters, and the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. But I never anticipated the antimatter legion. The hunt is far from over, yet all the while we find ourselves at war with other evil spirits. Hmm. From this battle onward, the Alliance must fight the Legion to our dying breath. Even if it means the end of the Law Fu. Our intelligence tells us that the Legion are a mad and destructive war machine. Yet they never took up arms against the Alliance. The armies of the Seven Ravagers all have their own means of destruction. They are not to be taken lightly. Lord Ravager Fantilia favors internal collapse, which is why she masterminded the Stellaron Crisis and urged the disciples of Sanctus Medicus out of the shadows. Now that her plot has been laid bare, she has no choice but to retreat, and yet that hardly suits her philosophy of destruction. There must be something more. Do you know something? When Don Fong committed his great crime, the Ten Lords Commission advocated strongly for him to be destroyed. The Vidyadra, on the other hand, were split evenly in their favor and disfavor of the motion. <laughs> the Dragon Transmutation Inheritance was not intact after all. The senior Vidyadra hated you, yet did not dare to kill you. The Vidyadra were under great pressure. In order to placate the Ten Lords and Skyfaring Commissions, they performed an exuviation charm on Don Fong against his will. Still, they ensured that the charm contained a flaw, thinking that this would fool the Ten Lords Commission. <laughs> the senior Vidyadra were sure of their scheme, but you cannot hide fire with paper. Look, your friends are taking the fight to the Legion as we speak. We need to help them. Let's go! Xing Yuin, where have you been? <laughs> Forgive my late arrival, Lady Fu. We are indebted to you and your forces. The seats of Divine Foresight relate the battle reports to me. As for Fantilia's plan... The Ambrosial Arbor. That's her focus. Lord Ravager Fantilia's strategy was to create civil strife. Then let it consume the Sien Zhou from within. She wanted to use the Arbor to disseminate the power of the Plague's author. And turn the Lafu into a hell of undying abominations. 
Hmm. That is clear to me now. Friends of the Astral Express, I have brought someone with me whom I think you'll be eager to see. It's a long story, March. It's me. So, you do have secret strength. <laughs> Let us save such reminiscence for later, shall we? My astral guess. When you first appeared on the La Foule, your stated aim was the resolution of the Stellaron Crisis. I was concerned that the Stellaron Hunters harbored ulterior motives and refused your offer. I see now that I was overly anxious. Nevertheless, it is true that the motives of the Stellaron Hunters were not what they appeared. <laughs> In order that the Express and the Sienjo fight side by side, Kafka lured you here and broadened the scope of the crisis. In doing so, she succeeded in making it clear that your sincerity is beyond doubt. The Lafu is in your debt, and I have no right to seek further assistance from you. However, as Lady Fu has explained, the appearance of Fantilia means that the situation is far from under our control. As General of the Lafu, it would be foolish of me not to ask Don Hong and the rest of you for your strength at this critical moment. Even if the crisis on the Law Fu had nothing to do with the Stellaron, I would be willing to help. But I can't speak for the other members of my crew. Explore, understand, establish, and connect. As the crew of the Express, that's the Trailblaze Creed we follow. Still, when the journey gets tough, those words can feel far off. Fear, risk, enemies, and death are the obstacles we face in pursuit of the Creed. That's why the nameless who are able to stay the course number few indeed. Whether our destination lies before us or behind us, the decision is ours to make. Here, as on the Express, every vote counts. Thank you, Don Hong. <laughs> How am I still one of the nameless? I stand here at the mercy of others without true freedom to speak. <sighs> but as a descendant of the Vidyadara, I will fulfill my duty to the Law Fu. <laughs> Great! Everyone's just as heroic as when they arrived. So, what's the master plan, General? There is no master plan, only a bet. A bet on the senior Vidyadra's incomplete exuviation charm. And on Dong Hong's ability to access the memories of the High Elder. High Elder? When the Rainbow Arbiter severed the Ambrosial Arbor, remnants of the curse of the Plague's author lingered. In order to make the stemming of those remnants a possibility, the La Fu invoked the power of the Scions of Permanence. Under the direction of the High Elder, the Vidyadara guided the waters of the ancient sea to flood the Skill Gorge Waterscape Delve and contain the Arbor to commemorate this magnificent feat and sacrifice, the Alliance erected the Dragon Vista Rain Monument, a Vidyadora statue. Ah, oh, it looks so much like Don Hong. I wonder if... 
The statue... Is that... Don Hung's brother? <laughs> I see why you might think so. These events occurred a long time ago. Yet successive generations of High Elders have not differed greatly in their appearance. That is, until the current generation. The most recent successor did not inherit the same level of power, and their appearance is that of a child. Do you understand, Don Hong? Since Dong Fong perished, the Lo Fu Vidyadra have no longer had an individual capable of performing such feats. But you, who once kept watch over the arbor, should be able to open a way through to that great tree. What happens next is in your hands. Uh, you scared the heck out of me! For a second I thought you'd annoyed the general. It seemed like you were his prisoner. There I was, thinking up a plan to kidnap you. And it turns out the two of you are old buddies. So... What made you suddenly decide to come down from the express? Aww, how sweet. But, Mr. Yang and I have been holding our own. We're pretty much Sienjo heroes at this point. Anyway, it's great to have you with us, Don Hung. Has coming here triggered your memory? Release your full potential. The power you carry is the key to opening a way through to the Ambrosial Arbor. I knew you'd come. When we first mentioned the Sienjo, there was a sad look in your eyes. They may have banished you, but the Lawfu is still your home. You're a member of the Express Crew, Don Hung. Let's settle this matter as soon as possible. Our journey doesn't end here. Imbibitor Lunay's reincarnation. Dong Hong, correct? I've heard your name before. Your name was only erased from the public eye. But as the Master Diviner, I know, and should know, all the records of years gone by. Such archives are of great importance in times of need. I was not born in the heroic and extraordinary era of the High Cloud Quintet. To have seen those legends with my own eyes. Your appearance closely matches the depiction in the annals. Does Vidyadara reincarnation really entail a complete transformation? A new life?
The annals mention that Scale Gorge Waterscape was once the location of Dragon Palace. Small wonder. Look at all these submerged structures. I was fortunate enough to be here during the Shuhu upheaval period. I witnessed this place in its prime. An age passed. The palace was left in ruins, and the Vidyadra used their sacred homeland to imprison the arbor. The Lofu and the Sienjo are greatly indebted to them. <laughs> Lady Fu. Here, General. Remain here. Lead the Cloud Knights in defense of this passage. We must prevent further incidents. Jing Yuan. General, are you planning to face Gantilia alone? <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I'll be counting on a few friends for support. General, don't cast us aside. We're willing to go with you. Yes, General. We may not be the mightiest force, but it's our duty as Cloud Knights to protect the Sienjo. How can we let Outworlders face the danger while we stay behind the lines? With your permission, sir, allow me to lead the way. I understand your sentiments, soldiers. But the adversary ahead of us is not an abomination of abundance. They are a Lord Ravager of the Antimatter Legion. Crossing this line will bring you into the conflict between the Rainbow Arbiter and the Ruin Author. You have a more important duty. Cloud Knight's attention! After I enter the Ambrosial Arbor, and if the seawater returns to its original state, you must withdraw immediately and seal off the delve once more. The Master Diviner will lead you. Yes, yes General! Lady Fu, if I am unable to return, I entrust you with the important task of relaying the full account to the other Sienjo ships. I trust you will be here to reissue the order in person. But whatever the outcome, I will do as you command and honor the mission. <laughs> Spoken like a true general. But my decision is made. That is the course we must take. I... Very well. In that case, I will report you to the Preceptors and have you stripped of the name and power of the High Elder. This must be... the first High Elder that accepted the mission to quell the Ambrosial Arbor. According to tradition, from then on, successive High Elders were obliged to return to the Dragon Vista Rain Hall. They would guide the tides of the ancient sea to guard and strengthen the Arbor's seal. Do you remember now? Yes. Reverence to the Three Talons, the path to the Great Roots. It's the way to the Root Depths. Uh, is that some kind of riddle? Reverence to the Three Talons. What the heck does that mean? Don't worry about it. Just follow me. Oh, what a huge palace. Completely abandoned. That must have been difficult for them. Imagine how upset you'd be if you had to abandon me. <sighs> for the Vidyatara? It must have been a necessary sacrifice. This is one of the places mentioned in the riddle. One of the three talents. If we can break the seal here, 
will be a step closer to the roots of the arbor. Those seals you mentioned, do you mean these weird-looking stone lanterns? That's right. From what I recall, we have to touch these stone lanterns in a particular sequence to unlock the seals in this area. In that case, then, I'll leave it to you. I'll do my best. It worked. General, did you hear about Miss Ting Yun? I received word from Lady Fu. The depth of Fentilia's infiltration, along with her meticulous planning, makes her extremely difficult to guard against. The Cloud Knights will carry out an investigation, but for now, our most pressing matter is to put a stop to Fentilia's scheme. This seal was already on the verge of breaking before the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Our reincarnation's greatest cost, the wisdom of a past life lost, yet through the teachings of our kind, unto the young again consigned. The mural depicts the Vidyadara being guided by their elder, a wiser kin after their rebirth. This mural is pretty interesting. Looks like time hasn't had any effect on it. This mural must be related to the others here. It tells the story of the Vidyadara self-reincarnation. From hatching rebirth in the ancient sea, to the return to that same sea as the cycle begins again. Hey, do you think this could be related to the seals? Perhaps. Uh, perhaps? Uh, fair enough. It's tough racking your brains all the time. I'm struggling to keep track. And as the day is almost gone, return alone to water's song. Beneath the waves in silver shell, await new life that time will tell. The worldly limit of the Vidyadra is reached after seven centuries. They return to the ancient sea and form a shell, awaiting the next hatching rebirth. Beneath the lunar glow adore, the Diodora eggs begin to form, and from the ancient sea rebirth, to walk again on solid earth. This mural describes the Vidyadara hatching rebirth in the lunarescent depths, the beginning of self-reincarnation. Hmm. Our people sing the hymn of clouds, and dance to water's cherished sounds. And high above the dragon flies, to each is destined different skies. This mural portrays the Vidyadara young. They acquire knowledge and depart for different places on the Shenzhou, thereby dedicating themselves to serving the Alliance. Okay, let's head to the third seal. The last of the three talons is here. There are abominations up ahead. Careful, everyone. Hmm. Did you notice the flagstone the creature was stepping on? I wonder if it has any connection to the seal. to the three talons is complete. Now, we must head for the roots of the arbor. The roots of the arbor are still growing. It's Ventilia. We must hurry. Uh, is that a dragon? We've reached the end. These are the roots of the Ambrosial Arbor, where the vestiges of abundance lie. Reverence to the Three Talents, the path to the Great Roots. This is it. 
Under the power of the High Elder, the arbor's roots have formed into the image of a dragon. Now, I will break the final seal. I hope everyone is prepared. The Law Fu chosen to grace me with his presence. Ah, that witch! She was here waiting for us the whole time! Show yourself, Fantilia! And the benefactors, too! Oh, patience, patience. Uh, let me make myself presentable. Now I see why the disciples of Sanctus Medicus hold themselves in such high regard. The Arbor's traces really do possess the power of metamorphosis and resurrection. All of you, ready yourselves! Don Hong, guard my back. I'm counting on you. Understood. Antilia, what is she doing? Benefactors, behold this beautiful body. The miracles of abundance live up to the name. Let's see if I can put it to good use. The very power that brought the Sienjo long life, I will use to bring it destruction. Antilia has usurped the power of the armor. All of you. Focus on destroying the Phantom Flowers. I'll go for the body. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend! Crush them! Troublesome. <laughs> so much bark with so little bite. Your attacks are futile. <laughs> this body was born of the Arbor. You are but ants. Have some strong wind! March, careful! <laughs> to victory! Try untangling yourselves from this. The weeds in my garden give me more grief. <laughs> Your arrogance betrays you. Strange. I am the vanguard of the hunt. <laughs> You'll pay for this. Lend me your strength. Vanquish the abomination! <laughs> Show no mercy. Lance ablaze. Lance! Forward! <laughs> For the Sienjo! <laughs> Lance at the ready. Life finds a way. Lend me your strength. Your your here. To guard and defend. Crush them. Vanquish the abomination. You don't look so good. Stay off! Your 
assistance is timely. I am the vanguard of the hunt. Is that it? You the doctor? I tell you, your scheme ends here, or the Sienjo! <laughs> I'm on guard. <laughs> Lend me your strength. On my command, vanquish the abomination. Let me tend your wounds. Finally! Your assistance is time <laughs> For the Sienjo! Crushing an ant with the weight of a star. How indulgent. The universe will end in destruction. And with it, the abundance and the hunt will disappear. General of the Sienjo, can your feeble strength survive this calamity? Don Hong, you take it from here! Did you think it was over, Fantilia? Finally remembered your duty of watching over the arbor. We've entered the storm. To guard and defend! Crush them! <laughs> Show no mercy! You'll pay for this. Vanquish the abomination! <laughs> Ephemeral. <laughs> what is your prescription? A thousand thanks. I'm on guard. On my command. To victory! With so little success, I wonder what the other Ravagers will think. It's almost as if you can't wait to be acquainted with them. 
I'm afraid you won't have the chance. Out of ideas, Vantilia! Lance of Blaze. Lance! Forward! Lend me your strength. Until you your vanquish the abomination! Uh, no all? time to end this. You must be the power! I won't waste this chance. Time to show you what's in your perspective! Vanguard of the hunt. Destruction will eat away at your flesh and transform you into pawns of the great Nanook. Let's start with this arrogant Sion Thank <laughs> you. 
I wonder if the transformation of the Sienjo general into a void manger would cast the law crew back into chaos. Destruction works in fascinating ways. What are you? But all I lost was a body stolen on a whim. And you, how much longer can you last? The destruction of the Sienjo is nigh. <laughs> Be gone, pawn of destruction. Tell the Legion that the vengeance of the hunt will fall upon them. <laughs> <laughs> General, are you... okay? I'm still alive. <laughs> and it would seem... the two of us can still coordinate our efforts. <laughs> Antilia, a truly fearsome enemy. If she hadn't attempted to turn me into a pawn of destruction, I'm afraid victory would have been far from certain. <clears throat> Fantilia had established a link between me and herself. Her well-timed strike gravely injured her. Thus, her connection to the arbor was severed. You, I was scared to death. <sighs> it takes more than that to destroy an emanator of destruction. Still, Fantilia won't be stirring up trouble anytime soon. Don't worry about her infecting the arbor again. It's just that sealing the Stellaron is going to take some time. Leave that to the Master Diviner. Whew. I'm afraid I may be <laughs> somewhat spent. Uh, General, keep those eyes open. Now's not the time to fall asleep. Uh, uh, hey, wake up! Can you wait a little moment? The Master Diviner will be here soon. She's temporarily taken on the General's responsibilities. Before meeting you, she must make the current situation known and fortify public spirit. This is her first real test as a General. I hope she can get used to things quickly. I don't think I can ever get used to this. It's a pleasure to see you all here today. Collating casualties and losses. Dispatching forces to round up the remnants of the Disciples. Submitting battle reports to the Six Charioteers. Now I know what Jing Yuan meant when he said, The highest throne faces the strongest wins. Generalship is no trifling matter. How could I be enjoying myself? All I can do is get used to it. <laughs> I think she's enjoying herself. Master Diviner, have you summoned us here just to sigh and complain? Of course not. On the contrary. 
I am eager to thank you all in my official capacity as Acting General of the Law Fu. Now that things have drawn to a conclusion, it is time to reward you. Ooh, all those benefits that the General promised! They're finally here! Yippee! Yes. The Astral Express has braved great evil for the Law Fu. Your devotion is evident. After discussions with the Six Charioteers, you are henceforth sworn allies of the Law Fu. Within the Law Fu's jurisdiction, you are to be treated with the highest standard of diplomatic protocol. On behalf of the Astral Express, I would like to thank you, Master Diviner. Oh, wow. Nothing tangible, then? Uh, but at least it sounds pretty cool. Now that things have been expressed, I still have something to discuss with you. Please, this way. Uh, seriously? Thanking us like that and then immediately sending us on another mission? It's not a mission. The Stellaron Crisis, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus Rebellion, the Arbor's Resurrection, not to mention the Antimatter Legion infiltrating the La Fu. All of these incidents need reporting at the highest level for investigation. It's just that, having been in the middle of everything, I'm struggling to keep an accurate perspective. I would appreciate if you could go through it all with me, so that I can reacquaint myself with a finer detail. So, where should we begin? It appears that Fantilia was the mastermind behind it all. The Sienjo warred with the Antimatter Legion in the past, and ever since we have kept a watchful eye on their movements. Few could have foreseen the insidious tactics employed in the execution of their assaults. The Lord Ravager slithered in unnoticed, clandestinely plotting and machinating, and surreptitiously bestowed a Stellaron upon the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. This heinous act instigated an uprising aimed at luring the Lafu into a perilous trap of self-destruction. The present danger posed by the Legion clearly demands a re-evaluation. We should proceed cautiously. When the Ambrosial Arbor was severed by the Rainbow Arbiter thousands of years ago, the abundance became a taboo. Those within the Alchemy Commission, the original masters of the so-called Way of Immortality, were ruined at a stroke. The Commission became a shadow of its former self. Presumably, from that moment on, the seeds of discord for the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus had already been planted. Some of them were willing to work with the enemy, acquiring a Stellaron from the Antimatter Legion to try and revive the Abundance. Hmm. They succeeded all right. But why would Fantilia's objective to be to realize their wishes? Those traitors gained nothing. They betrayed the Sienjo only to become sacrificial offerings in the Lord Ravager's grand scheme. The Stellaron Hunters. We know just as little. But in the Matrix of Prescience, I saw a prophecy that Kafka received from Destiny's Slave. Elio foresaw all manner of possibilities for the Law Fu. Based on what Kafka knows, and despite everything being under the control of Elio, that prophecy is indeed the most beneficial future for the Law Fu. The Stellaron Hunters walked right into our trap, and even gifted allies, in the form of yourselves, to the Sien Zhou. That might sound self-interested, but I hope the feeling is mutual. Now that the future has come true, the Sienjo has discovered the Legion's intentions, and with everyone's help, has imposed a crushing defeat on Fantilia. <sighs> that we may. But as logical as things might seem, there are still many details about which we're uncertain. 
For example, how was the Stellaron brought onto the Sien Zhou? And who sent it onto Scale Gorge Waterscape? How many disciples of Sanctus Medicus still remain at large? All of this is a mystery. Thus far, we've done our best. I'm submitting my report to the Alliance, and I've already got a plan in mind. All of you will feature in the report, but for the sake of Jin Yuan, anything related to Sien Zhou internal affairs will have names redacted. I hope you can forgive me. I was about to make the same request, Master Diviner. Since the Arbor's resurrection, I'm sure the Alliance will be poring over every detail of the report. I fear that if the Astral Express gets dragged into matters, leaving will not be an easy task. Mm. Jing Yuan has committed quite a few violations this time around, and I'll have to deal with them one by one. <sighs> Cloud Knight Generals are all such a hassle. Before you leave, please make time to recuperate. If there's anywhere you'd like to visit, feel free to take a look. I must attend to some Cloud Knight matters. Farewell for now. Oh, if you pass through Starskiff Haven, I have something that I hope you can give to Yukong. <sighs> it was all so chaotic. When Fantilia took form, it was as if Ting Yun vanished into thin air. The Cloud Knights were only able to find her fan. She took it with her everywhere. It's currently unclear if Ting Yun was a puppet manipulated by Fantilia, or if some form of deception was used to cloud her vision. I'm already prepared for the worst. Considering how the Legion operates, I fear the fate of the Skyfaring Commission Amicassador may be a bleak one. As for how matters are handled with regards to Ting Yun, I believe it's best left to her foxy and Ken. I have informed the Skyfaring Commission of the events which took place, and I think it would be best if you were the one to deliver this item to Yu Kong. I understand. Leave it with us. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Now, let me take a look at my remaining duties for the day. <sighs> it's quite the list. It's getting late. If you need me, I'll be in the Divination Commission Conclave Hall. Things have come to a close, for now. It's good that you came through unscathed. The Master Diviner asked us to pass on this item of Ting Yun's. I'll go to the Palace of Astrum and meet with Yu Kong. If neither of you has anything urgent, it'd be best if you came too. Well, we had a lot of stumbles along the way, but we still managed to kick butt and save the Law Fu without breaking a sweat. It feels kind of surreal. Uh, no way! Everything good has come our way due to our hard work. I'm not letting them take any of the credit. It may seem like the Stellaron Hunters are controlling everything, but we create our own future. No matter how powerful they are, they can't make a future that doesn't exist come true. Since showing up, we've saved a lot of people and averted disaster for the whole Sian Show. Who cares whether someone or something was directing it? Be happy! Actually, I was wondering if Diviner Fu could do me a favor. The Matrix of Prescience has amazing powers, and can iterate and reiterate Kafka's past. So it got me thinking, if I turned the Matrix on me, could it calculate my past? I was shy. Talking about personal stuff like that in front of everyone? It'd be too embarrassing. When you're free, let's go hit up the Divination Commission together and see what Fu Shen has to say. I see. 
Please extend my regards to the Ten Lords. I will. Our condolences, Hellmaster. You have guests. I shall take my leave. <clears throat> On behalf of the Skyfaring Commission, I would like to thank the crew of the Express for saving the Law Fu from the Stellaron Crisis. Madame Yukong must have heard about Miss Tingyun. Yes, I have heard. Seeing four leave, yet only three return, was enough for me to know that Fu Xuan's report was indeed correct. Ting Yun. I still can't believe it. The whole report reads like a bad joke. It's simply unimaginable. The Antimatter Legion on the Xianzhou? And Ting Yun? A Lord Ravager? How could someone who spent over 30 years working alongside me at the Skyfaring Commission turn out to be nothing more than a monster in disguise? What happened to the real Ting Yun? Ah, uh, Madame Yukong. I'm sorry. I understand. It's just hard for me to accept. <sighs> Thank you for bringing Ting Yun's belongings back to the Palace of Astrum. The Stellaron Crisis has cost us too many comrades. Brothers, sisters, children. I'd like to invite all of you, as witnesses to this war, to a soul-soothing ceremony hosted by the Skyfaring Commission. Will you consider? A soul-soothing ceremony? To put it into short life terms, a funeral. You see, for long-life species of the Xianzhou, Death has always been a distant, mystical concept. Ordinarily, the Ten Lords Commission guides people to the Hall of Karma before any symptoms of Mara are detected. There, they leave behind their lives and wait for their time to come. People are used to a short farewell as opposed to a tedious burial process. Given our limited lifespans, the only ones who place value on ceremony are us Foxians. Countless Cloud Knights lost their lives or became Mara struck during the crisis. The Hall of Karma couldn't take them all in, and so they passed away. All of these sudden deaths and unfulfilled wishes remind us that long life species still live out insignificant and limited lives. By combining Skyfaring Commission technology with Foxian ceremony, we honor those who have passed on. We place items of the dead onto star skiffs and send them out to sail between the stars, to shine brightly among them. It's not just to comfort the dead, those souls who can never talk with us again, but also to comfort their surviving relatives, close friends, and indeed all residents of the Xianzhou. It's also my way of saying farewell to Ting Yun. I know. I'm selfish. She may not have died a cloud night, but she's still one of us here at the Skyfaring Commission. A victim caught up in a wider conflict. I'd like to hold this ceremony as a way of distancing the memory of Ting Yun from the Lord Ravager who tarnished her identity. I can still hardly believe it. I'll use my own methods to locate Ting Yun's whereabouts, but at present, I... <laughs> this is the least I can do for her. I'd like to ask you all to witness this event with me. I've instructed Yen Ming to sort through Ting Yun's belongings. I hope you can pick some out to place around the Starscaff. Leave this to us. 
We'll take care of it as per your wishes, Madame Yukon. Once again, my thanks to all of you. I've asked the judges of the Ten Lords Commission to ratify this soul-soothing ceremony, and have commissioned a special skiff at Stargazer Navalia for the ceremony. If you need anything, that's where I'll be. You always did say that I liked to gossip, and here I am rambling on proving you right again. If only you were here to cut me off. Oh. It's you. For a moment, I thought she'd returned. Did the Helm Master send you over? We're here to help sort out Miss Ting Yun's things. Madame Yukong wants to use some of them for her soul-soothing ceremony. Well, I've managed to get through pretty much everything. It's all in this box. Please, take your time. Okay, let's see what there is. An amicacitor seal, a small box, a knife, a bow, and something wrapped up tight. I wonder what this is. Looks like some kind of... antique? But who'd want to hold on to something like this? Oh, Ting Yun explained that one to me. It's a folk statuette from Foxian antiquity. They say it can bring wealth if placed correctly. There's also a note in the package. This is for you, Mr. Yen Ming. Wishing you fortune and success in every endeavor. Yen Ming, it seems like this is a gift for you from Miss Ting Yun. I, I remember asking her for one at the time. <laughs> this is unexpected. I. I only mentioned it in passing, but she remembered. Ting Yun and I were from different guilds. We were competitors, but also colleagues. When we used to trade in other lands, we would bring back local specialties and distribute them among friends and other guild members. It became a custom. The rivalry between us and the Whistling Flames to be the Skyfaring Commission's top guild was always fierce. We would gift each other all kinds of bizarre oddities. Candy that made your leg hair grow. A violin that could shatter glass with its piercing shriek. Oh, I was completely unprepared for this. I never thought Ting Yun would leave something behind for me that was so sincere and earnest. If I don't return a gift, I'll lose our little duel. But what could I possibly gift her back? Huh. Besides the seal, the knife, and the bow, none of this seems like something Miss Ting Yun would have kept. I thought she was more about jewelry and beauty. Could there be other things similar to what Yan Ming got? We should take a look. There's nothing else, except a handful of seeds. It looks like there's something printed on the bottom of the box. The Sleepless Earl. Let me think, where have I seen that name before? I can't cook to save my life, but one thing I'm sure of is, that's a kitchen knife. I've never seen Miss Ting Yun use anything like that to defend herself. It must be another gift that she never had time to send. There's an ad in the knife case. Spices Supreme. A room alley? Which store is that again? This bow. It's a good bow. It couldn't be meant for me, could it? Oh, 
All right, just kidding. <laughs> just trying to liven things up around here. Do you know where we're supposed to take these things? The Sleepless Earl. Was that the name of that tea house at the port when we first got into town? Welcome to the Sleepless Earl. I'm the owner here. The name's Ming Ming. How many of you are there? Which tea would you like today? Oh! This is... This is the tea Miss Ting Yun promised to get for me. She really went to another world for me. She's incredible. When I took over this tea house from my parents, I thought I'd shake things up by creating a new tea product. Famous brews like Whale Tide Spring or vegetations in the Alchemy Cauldron have been around for millennia, and imported mixed teas have also found a niche. Introducing a new product into the industry is really hard. Miss Ting Yun came to the tea house one day and heard about my troubles. She said she could find me a brand new strain during her travels. One that nobody on the Cienjo had ever tasted. I just thought she was trying to cheer me up. I never thought she'd actually do it. Where is Miss Team Yun today? We found this box of seeds among her belongings. I'm sure Miss Ting Yun would have liked for you to have it. Thank you, all of you. I think I should give something to Ting Yun in return. Based on her suggestion, I improved the Whale Tide Spring, Emerald Hills, and Dawn Dew strains to make a new variety with a sweet, long-lasting taste. I called it... Ting Yun's Blend. Seeing as Ting Yun won't be able to try it, we should drink a cup to her memory. Papu is famous for its mung bean soda. Oh, how's it going? Did you take some time off? See any more of the Sienjo? Isn't that the place on Aurum Alley over an exalting sanctum? All the foodies go there. What about it? Planning on treating me to a feast? It's the main commercial street in the exalting sanctum. Although it's a lot quieter since the whole Stellaron crisis thing. Tourists fresh off the Starskiff always head to Starwatcher Avenue in Starskiff Haven. It's one of those bustling tourist streets. But if you want the real deal on local snacks, you've got to get to Aram Alley. I've marked it out for you on your map. Whenever I'm tired of Celestial Jade or slacking off, I head over for a bowl of Granny Chen's tofu. Darn it, now that you've brought it up, I suddenly don't feel like clocking in for work anymore. Uh, spice is supreme. Check out that sign. Here it is. Honored guests, welcome to our humble eatery. What can we get for you today? Oh, something from Miss Ting Yun for me? Oh, oh, what a precious person she is. Oh, a sweet thing like her, gifting me a kitchen knife. When she first ate here, I told her my motto, you can't better your own food unless you taste it. Then she got me to talk about my hunting and cooking experiences out on other worlds. She was captivated. She pestered me about dish after dish. At the end, she mentioned she wanted to get me a gift. A sword for a hero and a knife for a chef. <laughs> That's how she put it. She probably came across some rare mineral and forged it by hand. <sighs> Look how sharp it is. I bet it cut straight through a Thalassa Titanium Terrapin shell. <sighs> Miss Tingyun is too kind. 
Who among the Aram Alley vendors hasn't been spoiled by the generosity of whistling flames? Her grand fair puts small merchants like us in touch with big intergalactic vendors. If we're talking gifts, it's us who should be gifting her something. Oh, I heard the trade port is open again for business. Miss Tingyun must be real busy, right? This... This is real, right? <laughs> the monster you mentioned... Where did it come from? I wish... I wish I could take this knife and cut it to ribbons. <sighs> Forget it. Matters like these are beyond the control and understanding of a cook like me. <sighs> Thank you. All of you. Let me prepare a dish for you as a gift for Miss Tang Yun. It was our chili oil beef awful stew that first attracted Miss Ting Yun to our restaurant. I can't believe that she'll never taste it again. Please, you'll have to eat her share too. About that bow, I think I know who Miss Ting Yun intended to gift it to. Mr. Yen Ming said an Ami Cassiter will return with a gift for a trusted colleague. The person who Ting Yun trusts the most is Madame Yukong, right? What brings you here? This bow. Did Ting Yun pick it out for me? She understood my pain. It's a shame I can no longer do anything for her. Thirty years ago, I fought in a terrible war. My comrade and I set sail together, but only I returned. The scars of that war never truly healed. Still, the Law Fu traced out its arc of recovery and continued to trade. I felt tired of voyaging. Like I'd lost the courage to pull on a bowstring ever again. I hid away in the Skyfaring Commission and buried myself in work, never wanting to see the sky again. Despite rising to Helmmaster, my military career hadn't prepared me for the type of meticulous planning work now confronting me. Ting Yun, on the other hand, was a born merchant always discussing business matters with me and offering up advice, even if she was my subordinate. She never fought alongside me on the battlefield, but in her own way, she became a comrade in arms. Without the help of Ting Yun and the Guild, the Law Fu would not have been able to recover in the space of just 30 short years. I used to think that the Xian Zhou had changed with the times, Geniuses like Ting Yun were the future for the Skyfaring Commission's next generation. They would bring prosperity to the Law Fu. I was only ever suited to the flames of war. I was wrong. Only when the last minions of the Antimatter Legion are wiped out will I become useless to the Xian Zhou. The Xianzhou needs people like me. Those willing to cruise the sky and fight the flames. The Star Skiff is ready for the ceremony now. Everyone, please place your objects aboard the Star Skiff. Wait! Wait, wait for me! Miss Ting Yun prepared a gift for me. As a fellow Amicassador, I cannot fail to honor our custom. Yan Ming, what is it that you've prepared? I... I've brought a paper kite. 
I know it may seem simple compared to the precious items that Ting Yun gifted others in the past, but it has a deeper meaning. I heard that Foxians have a tradition where paper kites are used to comfort the souls of pilots who can no longer take to the skies. Ting Yun and I were never pilots in the strictest sense of the word, but we spent much of our lives out among the stars. For her to be able to take wing once again would make her very happy. We've got. What do you think we should place on the star skiff? This time we needn't compete. Go. Fly on to other distant worlds. gift from Miss Yensue on behalf of all the restaurants on Arum Alley. You're going to love this. This is the tea that Meng Ming has made, especially named after you. Thank you for everything you've done for the Skyfaring Commission and the Luo Fu. This small seal is the foundation of the Xianzhou's prosperity. The Skyfaring Commission shall never forget you, Ting Yun. I will seek out the truth. And if it is discovered that you were taken from us, I swear to avenge your unjust end. It is time for the soul soothing ceremony. Please make your way to Earthrise Agora in Starskiff Haven. The ceremony is finished. You should take a rest. Not yet. I have things I wish to convey to my astral friends. My apologies, I couldn't get to you any sooner. Yen Ching made sure that I was fully recuperated. Before you leave the Law Fu, there are two things I wish to gift the Express. Uh, two gifts? Has his conscience finally gotten the better of him? Is he going to make up for all our hard work along the way? Please, let us reconvene at the seat of divine foresight. Present company is gathered to reiterate the Sienjo La Fu's esteemed gratitude for the magnanimous actions of the Nameless. I am sure Lady Fu has given voice to this already, but the Law Fu is greatly indebted to you. Therefore, on behalf of the Law Fu Cloud Knights, I hereby present you with a Jade Abacus, a symbol of our allied friendship. It could indeed be considered a souvenir of a certain variety, but not one you could find in a gift store. Back when the Alliance was first established, all those thousands of years ago, the Sienjo ships swore an oath, etching the record into a jade abacus. The world may crumble and the heavens may fall, but this oath shall never be broken. The same is true of this jade abacus. It is a record of the Law Fu Cloud Knight's promise to the crew of the Astral Express. It is also a beacon. Grip it tightly, and it will send a message to the Jade Abacus here in my hand. No matter how astronomically distant you are, 
The Lawfu Cloud Knights will always come to the aid of the crew. Whatever your need may be. Wow, now that's what I call a payoff. <clears throat> of course, I trust that such an important article will not be used for trivial or inappropriate circumstances. I hope you can understand. Yep, got it. Say no more, sure thing. Thank you for your generosity, General. Don Hong. General. In accordance with the Edict of the Ten Lords Commission, I am hereby authorized to relieve your banishment decree. From this day henceforth, you may come and go freely on the Law Fu. Nice! But I must remind you that the crimes of Don Fung have had far-reaching implications. And some people, such as those in Scale Gorge Waterscape, will not be much moved by the issuance of a paper edict. While I can guarantee your freedom to come and go as you please, I cannot guarantee your safety. Again, I hope you can understand. I understand. This issuing of gifts brings with it a sense of relief. Even my wound is feeling much improved. The occasion calls for a line or two of poetry. Um, though I feel my efforts would be overshadowed by the erudition of Lady Fu. Another time, perhaps. The Express and its passengers have a long voyage ahead of them. May that voyage be smooth and untrammeled. <laughs> I bid you farewell. Himiko messaged me. The Express detected the Jade Gate's reopening. She asked whether we'd be heading back anytime soon. She was also asking after you, Don Hung. I think it'd be best if you update her in person, don't you think? She must have been worried. I'll return to the train and put her mind at rest. Himeko must be eager to hear about what we've been up to on this mission too, right? Uh, hang on. Oh, how could I forget? We should bring something back for the conductor. Have you got any unfinished business on the Sianjo? Oh yeah, there are some people we haven't said goodbye to yet. Fine, fine. Don Hung and I will go back to the Express. The two of you come back soon, okay? <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Yang. Uh, we've been so busy running around in circles, we haven't gotten the chance to say goodbye to friends we've just met. I feel like parting is still such sweet sorrow. Who should I go to first? The Master Diviner? Ching Chu? The Miracle Doctor? Or what about Master Gongshu? Uh, shall we go and meet them all? When I left the train, I only had time to say a quick goodbye to Himiko. I should go back and give her an update. And thank her for her guidance. Don Hung and I will go back to the Express first. You and March finish up here and come back soon, all right? Oh, hi. I know we haven't got the chance to get acquainted, but I've heard a lot of good things about the crew from the General. I have to say, I'm very impressed. So soon? Uh, I wanted to help the General, but things didn't turn out how I wanted them to be. I've learned my lesson. Also, I have a rather abrupt request. After fighting Don Hong, I feel like my skills are lacking somewhere. If you have any time to coach me... <laughs> Deal. Safe travels. Hello! 
start your next journey. That's great! <sighs> I can't wait to escape the commission again. Uh oh! Make sure you come visit! Next time you're here, we'll put my plan into action. <laughs> I've got it all figured out. We sneak out, head over to Arm Alley, and pick out on the snacks there. <laughs> mm hmm. It's a deal. And don't forget to come see me if you get any headaches, fever, tendon pain, joint pain, uh, anything. My treatment is on the house. I'm guessing seeing you here probably means that your affairs on the Sanjo are mostly complete. Is that it? I thought you were gonna stay for at least a little longer. Did Welt learn how to play Celestial Jade in the end? If he hasn't got the hang of it yet, tell him to come see me and I'll show him the ropes. Oh, I haven't asked you yet. Are you interested in learning yourself? I thought so. Come back when you have time. I'll teach you. We're in agreement then. You can come back anytime and I'll teach you how to play. Uh, hi. Sure am. Things have been in constant turmoil since I transferred to the La Fu. Now that I've got a little free time, I'm here to listen to some storytelling. Are you... Sorry, I've, I've met so many people recently. Uh, you seem unfamiliar. Judging by your clothes, you must be an outworlder. Is that so? Well, before you leave, I, I recommend listening to Mr. Xien's Legend of the High Cloud Quintet. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to be an epic hero. I never get tired of hearing about the Quintet. I'm sure you'll love it. You should bring Don Hung along next time. We can chat over some tea. Anyway, I'm getting off track. I won't take any more of your time. Good luck. Are you off then? The Xianzhou Lo Fu is all the richer for your brief time with us. I offer blessings on behalf of the Skyfaring Commission on the eve of your departure. If you require resupplying during your journey, you can always count on us. Are you here to say goodbye? There's no need to be so anxious. I predict that you will return to the Sienjo often, and you will definitely continue to trouble us when you do. Therefore, forget about any farewells. All right, okay, I understand. I wish your travels be fleeting of foot, and may your crises be effortlessly resolved. There's a dreamlike quality to watching these star skiffs depart through the Jade Gate. How long will these ships sail, and which stars are they traveling to? From a universal perspective, there is little difference between the lives of long and short life species. The transcendence that the Sienjo pursues is nothing compared to the enduring majesty of the stars. And the grief felt here is no different from our own. You're back! Welt was telling me about your experiences. I'm more than a little envious. The Ambrosial Arbor, the Ebon Deer, the Divination Commission Matrix, Scale Gorge Waterscape! I pestered Don Hung to tell me about his experiences, but alas, what could have been a magnificent saga was reduced to a few words and a grunt. Next time? I think I should be the one trailblazing with you guys. Welt can stay on the express. <laughs> Since when did the work roster just change like that?
Yes, no more Stellaron Hunter interruptions. It's time to get our original plan back on track. Our next stop is Penacony, remember? The Express's records show that Penacony was a prison planet used by the IPC to exile criminals. At least, it was at the time of recording. However, following a Stellaron burst, the planet fell into the arms of Shipe. They say it's been transformed into a prosperous and ethereal realm. The family is throwing a banquet there, and they sent invitations out to the Express. I was curious about the state of the planet, so I accepted. When the conductor is ready, we can set off for the next stop. <clears throat> All who enter here are either jailers or prisoners. Which are you? <laughs> Neither. I'm merely a lost traveler. <gasps> What a spectacle. The Stellaron, the Ambrosial Arbor, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, the Lord Ravager. A series of threats that almost succeeded in diverting attention away from the crucial question. They who brought the Stellaron onto the Siendro, what was their motive? <laughs> Will you surrender, or do you require encouragement? Abomination of Yausher. General, my power does indeed stem from the Abundance. But I'm the same as you. We are both enemies of Yaoshur. <laughs> That's right, Jing Yuan. <gasps> Stay out of our way. The revival of the Arbor is an omen. It's time for the Sienjo to choose its next path. The Rainbow Arbiter, the Plague's author, <gasps> the Ruin author. This is a chess game between eons. If you don't stand with the winners, you stand to lose. And this time, we will put the abundance in their grave. <laughs>